here in Texas. The Friday night lights shining brightly at the ballpark in Arlington, home of the Texas Rangers. We are just moments away from playoff baseball. Tonight's MLB wild card is presented by Budweiser. The winner of this game gets the New York Yankees in the American League Division Series. For the loser, it's a disappointing and very quick end to the postseason on the same night that it begins. Good evening, everybody, and welcome, along with the Hall of Famer, the Iron Man, Cal Ripken, and the future Hall of Famer, John Smoltz. I'm Ernie Johnson. Thanks so much for being with us tonight. Let's talk about the Texas Rangers. Looked like they were cruising to another AL West title, then they stumbled down the stretch, John, and here we are in basically a game seven to start the postseason. It is a game seven. Texas is trying to get back to the World Series for the third time in a row, and they're going to have to do it in a game seven format. Uh, to avoid that bitter taste of the last three games they lost against Oakland, they have a chance to win a game and get in and do that quest that we talked about. And to do that, Hugh Darvish is on the mound. They spent a lot of money to get this guy in the offseason. They need him to be exactly what they hoped for, and he has been that with his last eight starts. Five and one record. This guy can swing and miss stuff. He'll strike you out. He may walk a few batters, but for the Texas Rangers, they've been there, done that. They have the experience. They know what this game means, and I think they'll be ready for the challenge. And while the Rangers try to get back to the World Series for a third straight time, the Orioles haven't been in the playoffs since 1997 when you were still playing <laughs> Iron Man. How did they do it this year? I can't remember that, but certainly this is a lo loose bunch of guys. Certainly they play the game hard, but they have fun. Um, but I don't think they're feeling the pressure at all. I think the pressure in their minds is on the Texas Rangers. They play, they have the knack for playing one run games. They know how to play one run games and they score half their runs via the home run ball uh, led by Chris Davis and Adam Jones. But let's not forget about the 20 year old phenom Manny Machado. He's going to play shortstop in the big leagues someday, but right now he's the third baseman for this team right here. And since he's been the third baseman, that defense has gone from 30th, which is dead last, to number one. So certainly uh, he's made a big difference. And then there's Buck Showalter, who's pushed all the right buttons. It's the Baltimore Orioles and it's the Texas Rangers, the first ever American League wild card game. It's just moments away. Bazooka Joe Saunders gets the ball for the Orioles. Hugh Darvish for the Texas Rangers here on TBS. Chris Davis, uh, one of the many uh, one-time Rangers now on the Orioles. He will be in right field. Adam Jones will be in center, batting cleanup. Matt Wieters, of course, behind the plate catching. The veteran Jim Tomey will be the designated hitter. Mark Reynolds will be at first base. The youngster, Ryan Flaherty, will be at second base. Another youngster, Manny Machado, will bat ninth. He will be at third base. For Texas, Ian Kinsler will be at second base. Elvis Andrews at shortstop. Josh Hamilton at center field. Adrian Beltre at third base. Nelson, Nelson Cruz in right field. Michael Young will be at first base. Mike Napoli, the DH. Giovanni Soto does the catching. And Craig Gentry will be in center field. Joe Saunders on the hill for the Orioles. Right now, at Papa John's, get a large two-topping pizza for $10. Or any large pizza on the menu for only $2 more. That's right, any large two-topping for $10. Or any large pizza for just $2 more. Call or order at PapaJohns.com. We'll be back to Texas for playoff baseball after these messages.
Now the playoffs are underway. Here's Joe Angel. All right, Fred, uh, first pitch, uh, Nate McClouthy bounces one toward the back at first base, and Michael Young tried to backhand the ball. It bounced off his glove and then trickled behind him, and that uh, results in McClouth getting on base on the game's first pitch. We'll see how they rule that. As Michael Young uh, to his right tried to backhand the ball, it should be an error. The ball came up and hit off the heel of his glove, and uh, so now McLeod on base. Nobody out here's J.J. Hardy. And yeah, that will be charged an error, Joe. So here's J.J. right-hander against right-hander. You Darvish against Hardy. McLeod, Hardy, and Davis, the one-two-three hitters, and Hardy takes ball one. You Darvish, in the regular season, won 16 games, made 29 starts. And wound up with a 390 ERA and just over 191 innings. He got off to a great start in the regular season. Pitch on the way to Hardy. Low. Runner going. Go to second base. Bonks is in. And the shortstop, Andrews, is backing up on the play. He knocks it down. So McLeod, a stolen base. He had 12 of those in the regular season. And was caught just one time in the regular season. So he's out there in scoring position with nobody out. Now the Orioles very aggressive. Uh, we were told that uh, Hugh Darvish does not th hold runners on very well and only 12 percent of the base runners attempting to steal against Soto have been thrown out. Now right, here's J.J. with a runner at second base. And Darvish will check the runner and delivers now to Hardy. And J.J. hits it back up the middle and into the right center for a base hit. McClough is turning third and he scores standing without a play. The second baseman Kinsler diving to his right could not get there. That ball gets through Hardy an RBI single and the Orioles are off to uh, I would say uh, a pretty good start in Texas got a one nothing lead. Already taking advantage of a Texas error. Getting uh, McLeod on base the steal and the big hit by J.J. And now here's the former Texas Ranger Chris Davis Hardy who knocked in 68 runs in the regular season is off to a good postseason start. Chris Davis now right-hander against left-hander. Davis the one-time Ranger and Chris takes a strike at the knees. A Darvish his last start uh, in the regular season on September 30th in a no decision against the Los Angeles Angels but uh, in September this guy pitched really well. And before that he had struggled for about a month and a half. And Davis will take a fastball for a call strike. Think about you, Darvish. He throws a cut fastball. And uh, in his last several games, that cutter has been his go to pitch. Yeah, and that allows him to throw strikes. And uh, with his uh, other pitch, his other fastball, it's out of the strike zone often. Davis digs in. Here comes the pitch and a big swing and maybe a foul tip of the plate. So Davis now with a strikeout. One away, and now here's Adam Jones. Darvish, he has a, what they call a plus fastball that he cuts quite often, but he also has the four seamer. He's got a, a plus breaking ball, a curve and a slider, and throws the occasional changeup. But the changeup is a pitch that uh, lately he has not gone to very often. And he throws a split for his change, but as you say, that's been an infrequent pitch over his winning run. So now Darvish will pitch to uh, Adam Jones. And he misses low and inside for a ball. Adam uh, hit 287 in the regular season. Of course, 32 home runs, 82 knocked in. But the uh, last home run he hit was on July 24th. Uh, I should say September 24th. So it's been a while. Here comes the pitch. And this one he takes inside. They count two balls and no strikes. Texas defensively, Beltre at third. And he might be the best uh, defensive third baseman in the American League. Elvis Andrews out there at short. Kinsler at second. Michael Young right now holding with Hardy at the back at first. The catcher Giovanni Soto. Hamilton in left. Gentry in center. Cruz in right. And now the pitch. Jones popped it up. Right side near first base. Michael Young on the infield grass. And he will make the catch. So two gone. And with J.J. Hardy still at the bag at first base. Now we'll check in with Matt Weeders. Now, you Darvish, 26 years of age. Of course, born in Osaka, Japan. 
He began the season 10 and 4. That was his record on June 26th. And then he went through a bad stretch in which he went 1 and 4. But lately, he's been real good. 5 and 1, his last eight starts with about a 235 ERA, which is the way he pitched earlier in the season. And now Weeder sticks a little bit low for ball one. I think about Darvish, too, even though he's a starting pitcher, he pitches from a stretch all the time. He began that early in the season when he was having difficulty throwing strikes, and uh, that did help him with his command. At the belt and delivers to Weeders. And this one picks up the outside corner. So Matt Weeders with Hardy at first base and a run in, one nothing in the first inning. Weeders with 23 home runs in the regular season. None of them against the Rangers. Darvish a glance at the base runner. Hardy off the bag at first. And Darvish will now step off and look J.J. back to the bag. In the regular season, Weeders had just two hits and 24 at-bats against the Texas Rangers. So here comes the pitch. Weeders lines it foul off to the left. So the Rangers have done a real good job on Weeders all year. Now watching the radar gun here at the ballpark, it's been 88 to 92 for his fastball, so basically throwing that cutter. Well, in his last start, he threw that cutter 48% of the time. Matt Weeders digs in. Darvish will take a look at the belt and delivers. And Weeders takes a breaking ball down and in. So Weeders now with a count of two balls and two strikes. McLeod was on base on an error. Then he stole second base. And then J.J. Hardy knocked him in. one nothing Baltimore in the top of the first inning. Weeders back in. Darvish takes a look. Hardy off the bank at first. And the Texas right-hander again delivers. Another breaking ball, and Weeders takes it down at his feet. So three and two, and Hardy will have a head start. And on deck is Jim Tomey. He'll say for the last month, one thing you could expect when Darvish was on the hill was to get a few walks in the ballgame. 89 walks over his uh, 191 in the third innings in the regular season. Well, he had the fourth most watch in the American League this year. Right-hander again ready. Weeders waits. Here comes the pitch. There goes J.J. And the breaking ball. Weeders swings and misses. He got him on a breaking ball, three and two. And the side is retired. But the Orioles get a run, an unearned run. And now Joe Saunders. It's his turn as we head to the bottom of the first inning. It is one nothing Baltimore. And this is the Orioles radio net. Now we're back in Texas, 1 0 Orioles, and now uh, Joe Saunders will go to work on Ian Kinsler, then uh, Elvis Andrews, and then Josh Hamilton here in the bottom of the first inning. We talked about Joe Saunders in the regular season as an Oriole, three wins and three losses. His last start was at Camden Yards against the Red Sox, and he won that ball game 6 to 3, a game in which uh, Nate McLeod had a leadoff home run, and then later J.J. Hardy and Chris Davis also homered in that game. Saunders in that game gave up a two run home run but uh, he did not walk anybody in that game and Fred we talked about Saunders lack of success here in this ballpark against the Texas Rangers but uh, I'm sure he feels hey it's about one game now and remember his last start in this ballpark he actually pitched pretty well yeah but he's 0 six with an ERA approaching over nine against this ball club but he came up big in Baltimore as you said and then the Orioles stood around and watched this Texas ball club play the Angels and unfortunately the Angels rallied in that bottom of the ninth or else the Orioles could have celebrated on their way out to, to play their next series down at Tampa Bay. You know, Joe Saunders has been in uh, three postseasons with the Angels and also one with Arizona so he's got that uh, experience as Kinsler he takes a call strike to get his at bat started. But uh, in the postseason, Saunders is 0-1 in four starts. Fastball is up and away. Yeah, and against Texas in this ballpark, 31 innings, he has given up 13 home runs. And now the breaking ball, he pulls it hard but foul. 
alongside the Oriole dugout on that third base side. So it Kinsler with a count of one ball and two strikes. Texas Rangers, of course, uh, have the identical record as the Orioles in the regular season. And now the fastball is too low. 93 and 69. And of course, they finished one game out in their division after suffering that three game sweep in the final three games against the Oakland A's. And now the 2 2 pitch. Low and inside, ball three, three and two. And in that game, they had a 5 1 lead at one point at the Coliseum, but then ultimately lost the ball game and wind up the wild card. Well, they, they uh, certainly limped into the postseason, losing 5 of 6, 9 of 13 to close out the regular season. And now the changeup is up and away, and he walked him. So Saunders, that time, 3 and 2, changeup missed badly. So he had him one and two, and he walked him. And now here's Elvis Andrews, the number two hitter. One nothing Orioles, bottom one. Elvis Andrews, right-handed hitter. The Rangers here, Juan Washington, is using only one left-hand hitter in the entire lineup. And of course, uh, that would be Josh Hamilton. Saunders this season, right-handers hit over 300 against him. Left-handers only 199, and the Rangers have eight right-hand hitters in the lineup tonight. Go to first, too late. Now, Kinsler did have 21 steals in the regular season. Well, he's at first with nobody out, and the Orioles had one nothing in the bottom of the first inning. Elvis Andrews also very tough to double up. Saunders to look at first and delivers, and uh, Andrews takes a fastball up and away. And again, that one not even close. Manny Machado, very shallow at third base. And you do wonder how much rope Buck Showalter will give Saunders in this game. I would expect it's going to be a very short leash this evening. One ball, no strikes. And the left-hander again at the belt delivers. And uh, Andrews feigns a bunt. But instead, he pulled the bat back and takes outside. So the count, two balls and no strikes. And on deck is Josh Hamilton. Talk about Saunders against Texas in his career has made 11 starts and his record in those games three and seven. And the pitch, Elvis takes up and away for ball three, and Matt Weeders goes out for a, a bit of a lecture. Now second consecutive Texas hitter seeing a three-ball count went to three and two before Kinsler drew the walk. Now three and zero oh to Elvis Andrews. Then you get to the big boys. Now he had Kinsler one and two and walked him so. This is not good. Weeders now back behind the plate. And Elvis Andrews back in, 3 0. Let's see if he's taking. Kinsler off the bag. Saunders at the belt. And he'll go to first base. And Kinsler's back in there standing. Manny Machado is at third. Hardy at short. Flaherty at second. Reynolds on the bag at first. Weeders back at the plate. McLeod in left, Jones in center, Davis in right. And the left-hander Joe Saunders at the belt and delivers. And he takes a strike. Fastball. And to me, it looked like a very generous call. It looked like it was up and away. And Gary Darling uh, giving a nice wide and high strike zone that time. Yeah, getting a look at the replay. And, uh, well, borderline. It looked as though Weeder set up on the inside. And Saunders threw that ball over the outside. And now the 3 1 pitch is a fastball. That's in there for a call strike. And when they're at the knees, and, and it looked like it was right down the middle. So they count 3 and 2. And I'll tell you what, that one call that Saunders got on 3 and 0, oh, who knows, that might change his inning around. So they count 3 and 2. And now the left hander again ready and delivers. And Andrews bouncing ball toward left. That's a base hit. Hardy couldn't get to it. Kinsler will go to third base, and he's in there sliding without a play. So the base hit on three and two, and the Rangers have runners on first and third with nobody out. And now we'll take our first look in this game at Josh Hamilton. 
It's been a struggle recently for Hamilton. He's had just two hits in the Oakland series, including a big error in that final game at Oakland. But of course, still very much a fan favorite here in Texas. Oh, well, Hamilton has last 19 games. He's hit about 230, so he's been struggling for quite a while now. And uh, Saunders has done a real good job this year against left-hand hitters, but. Hamilton isn't just any left hand hitter. Here comes the pitch. Bouncing ball towards second base could be two. To Hardy for one and out of Reynolds a double play. It does tie the game but Hamilton into a four to six to three double play and Saunders will take that all day. It's a one one game. And that leadoff walk comes around to tie the ball game. And now with the bases empty, here's Adrian Beltre. And that double play may settle Saunders down. Pitch on the way to Beltre. And he is strike on the inside corner. And now Beltre is a, a bit unhappy. <laughs> he looked down at the plate for a while and then looked back with a kind of a wry smile at home plate umpire Gary Darling. Beltre playing third base tonight, last three games in the regular season, but a DH. He's had a, a tender shoulder. He takes low and outside for a ball. Count even up at one ball and one strike. Beltre in the regular season, 36 home runs. There comes the pitch. This one outside. And the count two and one to Beltre. And of course, uh, on August 22nd, he had that three home run game against the Orioles. And the pitch on the way. Beltre, fly ball, center field should be caught. Jones is in to make the catch, and that's it. But for Saunders, after a horrendous start, not a bad finish. He gives up just the one run. Remember, the Rangers had runners on first and third, nobody out. So at the end of one, it's a 1-1 game on the Orioles radio network. The fans, the Orioles would like to recognize our proud sponsor, DentaQuest. It is the fastest growing dental plan in Birdland. So visit DentaQuestDental.com to get all the information. Now, here we go. Inning number two, 1-1 game. And you, Darvish, will go to work on Jim Tomey, then Mark Reynolds, and then Ryan Flaherty. We're going to pause your 10 second station identification on the Orioles radio now. I hear Jim Tomey, of course, uh, he's got his fingers crossed. He'll do whatever he can to. Trying to help the Orioles maybe make it to a World Series because if they make it, he makes it there for the first time in his Major League career. He's been in 67 postseason games, but not one World Series game. So let's see. Darvish to Tommy, and he misses inside for a ball. You Darvish, in the first inning, 17 pitches, gave up one unearned run, had a couple of strikeouts. Of course, Darvish is very much a strikeout kind of pitcher and delivers to Jim Tomey and a little bit low on the count two balls and no strikes Darvish in the regular season was sixth in the league in wins and he was fifth in the league with 221 strikeouts in 191 innings Tomey takes it at the knees that's a call strike so the count two and one now Tomey lately has had difficulty making contact. He is 0 for his last 12 with eight strikeouts. Here comes the pitch. Line drive caught by the diving second baseman. Kinsler diving toward the edge of the outfield grass made a one-handed catch and held on to it and Jim Tomey got robbed. Now that ball was a rocket. Base hit written all over it and a nice play by the second baseman Kinsler as he had to leap high into the air and make a dive toward the ball and he hung on to it. Well, Jim Tomey didn't have trouble making contact there. Yep. Man. But sometimes those gloves get in the way. Nicely done by Kinsler who has struggled out there at second base defensively this season. 18 errors already. Yep. And now here's Reynolds. Big swing and a miss. I think about you Darvish and of course the Oriole lineup Darvish very much a strikeout pitcher and the Orioles very much a, a strikeout kind of a team. 
I mean, lots of home runs, lots of strikeouts, too. And Reynolds takes a breaking ball upstairs. Reynolds in the season, 23 home runs, and with 69 RBIs, and batting average at 221. In the uh, three games at Tampa, he was 0 for 10. And the pitch. Reynolds cues it foul. As that ball dribbles uh, just off to the right. And Mark suffered through four strikeouts in that series, yeah. but that was a extremely well pitched series by both teams, especially so by the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Well, Reynolds uh, has been scuffling four hits in his last 35 at bats. That's a 114 batting average in that stretch. Of course, when he gets hot, he is a tough out. And now the pitch. And Reynolds will take low and outside. So the count two and two to Mark Reynolds. You Darvish mentioned 26 years of age and is uh, coming off the best rookie season ever by a Texas Ranger. 16 wins, nine losses. And now the 2 2 pitch. Oh, look out! Fastball runs in, and Reynolds got down and got hit by that pitch. And he's in some pain. He got hit on the hand, and he is holding that uh, hand kind of tucked under as he is kneeling in the dirt behind home plate. Well, Ron Washington is coming out to claim that uh, the ball hit the bat. Looks like the left hand as he takes off that batting glove, and Richie Band sells out to look at that hand. Of course, he was hit by a foul ball in the final game at Tampa Bay, and they took an MRI, and nothing uh, showed up in the way that could keep him out of the lineup tonight. But here, going first at bat. Well, he took a, a glancing blow on the knuckles of his right hand. And I'm sure Washington came out to argue that maybe, uh, or at least wondering, if Reynolds might have been in the process of swinging when that ball hit the hand and of course if that's the case then it would be a swing but the umpire said no he, he checked his swing so it's a hit batsman and Reynolds gets out first with uh, just a one out. Well Mark's really being beat up these last couple of games. Now we saw what happened to Nick Marcakis on a play just like that. And Nick uh, if uh, the Orioles go to it could be available for the World Series. He's with the ball club of course along with Brian Roberts. Yeah, here's Ryan Flaherty as Reynolds uh, being escorted by Richie Bansells out toward the bank at first base. Richie is going to stay with him until the last instant just to make sure that Reynolds is going to be okay and is able to going to remain in the ball game here. So the Orioles in the first inning, McLeod on base on an error and then stole second base and then scored on a J.J. Hardy single. Now in the second inning, with one out Reynolds hit my pitch and uh, Reynolds still being looked at over at the back at first base. Now Mark still appears to be in somewhat of discomfort there and Buck and uh, Richie still talking to the Oriole first baseman. By the way earlier today in the uh, wild card in the National League the Cardinals beat Atlanta by a score of six to three. Kyle Loesch winning over Medlin. With Mott picking up a save. Matt Holliday hit a home run for the Cardinals. And uh, David Ross hit one for Atlanta, but in a losing cause. So the Braves are done. The Cardinals will uh, move on to the divisional series against the Washington Nationals. And now here's Flaherty. Reynolds at the bag at first. One out. 1-1 one, one game in the second inning. And the pitch on the way to Flaherty. Is taken at the letters. That's a call strike. Yeah, the Nationals uh, will be in St. Louis to play the Cardinals Sunday afternoon. And of course, if the Orioles win here tonight, they'll be hosting the Yankees Sunday night at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Reynolds off the bag and now gets back as a Darvish gets that ball over to Michael Young. Reynolds uh, had one stolen base in the regular season, but Ryan Flaherty with that first baseman on the bag. Right now he's got that huge hole to shoot at on the right side of the infield. And Darvish delivers to Flaherty. Big swing and a miss. That time he got to the cut fastball. That was down and in and Flaherty couldn't find it. So the count nothing in two now. Flaherty a 216 hitter in the regular season with 
Six home runs and 19 RBIs. He did have a home run in the regular season against the Texas Rangers. He was two for seven against them. Then Darvish, 0 and 2. And now the step off and the fake toss to the bank at first. Tied up at one to one in the top of the second inning. You Darvish, who by the way is very deliberate, and in particular with men on base. Here comes the pitch. Flaherty, another swing and a miss. As he got to the breaking ball that time. So Darvish picks up his third strikeout. And with two outs, uh, Manny Machado will have his first postseason at bat. And that breaking ball, a nasty one to uh, Flaherty as it broke down and uh, toward the inner portion of the plate. And his uh, cut fastball has very similar movement, but a little bit harder. Yeah, the cutter's about 90 or 91. That was about 84. Mm -hmm. So the slider. And now here's Machado with a man aboard and two outs in a 1-1 game in the second inning. And there goes Reynolds. Machado takes the ball. Go to second. A tag. Too late. Reynolds steals it to get into scoring position. Looked like Reynolds got a pretty good jump, but again... You Darvish does not do a good job of holding runners, and Reynolds took advantage. I mean, once he comes out of the ascent position, Darvish is very slow toward the plate. Yeah, good throw by Soto, but again, the, the steal on Darvish, just the second one, regular season and now postseason for Mark Reynolds. Now we talked about you Darvish, of course, uh, a rookie this year. Machado now a chance to pick up an RBI. And he hits a ground ball to first base. One hopper with a lunging grab of the ball is Michael Young. And then he'll step on the bag and get the out himself. A twisting one hopper. And Young stayed with it. That's it. And the Orioles leave a runner at second base. We head to the bottom of the second. It's 1 1 on the Orioles radio network. By Joe Angel, Fred Manfred, along with Mighty Casey Willett uh, here at Texas. Here we go, bottom of the second. It's a, a 1 1 game. By the way, I want to correct myself. But uh, Jim Tomey, I think I said earlier that uh, Jim Tomey had never been in a World Series game. And, of course, that's wrong. Last time he was in a World Series was back in 1997, much to the uh, chagrin of the Orioles that year. But he has been in a bunch of World Series games. But he certainly, at the age of 42, he hasn't been in a World Series since 1997. And now at the age of 42, Tim uh, Tomey would... Love to get back, wouldn't he? Yeah. Yeah, the Cleveland Indians that year in the American League Championship Series yep. in six games took care of the birds. I remember that all too well. Now, see, that's just something I wanted to forget about. And I think I did a good job of that, too. Here's Nelson Cruz to get the bottom of the second started. 1-1 game, and Saunders delivers. Fastball strike on the outside corner. Saunders, who in the first inning walked the leadoff hitter, then gave up a single. And the Rangers had first and third, nobody out, but then a double play ball. Well, ground ball to Flaherty out to his right at second base. He'll go to Reynolds, and Cruz is retired, four to three. One away, and now here's Michael Young. I'll tell you what, that was a huge double play ball that uh, he forced Hamilton to hit into. And the kind of a double play in that situation. Now, the Rangers, a very potent lineup but uh, that double play ball really kind of quieted things down and now here's Michael Young and the pitch fastball just off the outside corner one ball no strikes tied up at one to one in the second inning and now Saunders again delivers and Young takes it low count two balls and no strikes it's been a very un Michael Young like season for this uh, veteran player here hitting under 300 but the last uh, month or so hitting about 354. Young lines it up the middle and that's a base hit the left center. Jones feels it. He gets it back into second base. So Michael Young one away he gets aboard and now here's Mike Napoli. Michael Young who on August 23rd uh, became a well his third son was born in late August. So no matter what the numbers, Michael Young has had a phenomenal year. His son's name, by the way, is uh, Antonio Barbosa. Antonio Barbosa Young. 
Just a couple of months old now. Here's Napoli. Saunders delivers. Napoli takes a fastball for a call strike. Well, Mike Napoli should know Joe Saunders very well. Many games he was behind the plate when Saunders was pitching for the Angels. Napoli in the game on Wednesday was 0 for 4, but before that he was smoking hot. He hit like four home runs and knocked in 10 runs in his previous five games. Napoli a check swing. He takes outside for a ball. And now the appeal to first. And uh, Jerry Lane says, yeah, he checked his swing. So Napoli, one ball and one strike. Of course, Napoli, it seems like every time he does hit a home run, he does it against the Angels, against uh, his former club and his former manager, Mike Sosha. Here comes the pitch. Napoli takes low and outside, ball two. Two and one the count. Napoli in the regular season did hit 24 home runs and knocked in 56. He was on the disabled list with a quad injury until mid September. That's when he came off the DL and has been pretty good since. The count two and one. Saunders delivers. Napoli takes a fastball that missed badly up and away. I mean, not even close. So Saunders here pitching himself into some difficulty. With a count three and one to a dangerous right hand hitter. Saunders again standing tall looks in says yes. He'll check Michael Young at first base and delivers. Napoli swing and a miss. Fastball and he swung late. With a count three and two. And fastball was up at 88 and they Napoli with uh, just a bit tardy on that swing. Now think about Napoli 12 of his last 20 hits have been home runs and he will strike out 125 of them this year Saunders a look and delivers Napoli takes a fastball strike three called well he had to be looking breaking ball there three and two and he might have been looking breaking ball on three and one remember he got the fastball there he swung late on three and one and then uh, he took a cut fastball on the inside corner for strike three called. Saunders with a big strikeout, his first, and now here's the catcher, Giovanni Soto. 1 1 game, bottom two in Texas. Soto, a right hand hitter, pitch on the way to him, is a breaking ball, a beauty in there, call strike, 0 and 1. And that was at 74 miles an hour, and Soto, all he could do was be frozen and watch it. Machado backed up at the back at third. J.J. Hardy right now at the edge of the outfield grass. And Flaherty out there at second base, very deep. And the pitch. Soto takes another, maybe a change up that time after a check swing, and he missed a up and away for a ball. So 1 1 the count to Soto. And the outfield against Giovanni Soto, very spread out. Soto did have five home runs in the regular season. And Saunders again at the belt and delivers. Soto breaking ball, waved at and missed. So one and two to the uh, Texas catcher. So far he's yet to see a fastball in yep. this at bat. Now Hardy at shortstop playing very deep and well over toward the hole. Saunders again from the belt and delivers. And Soto takes a fastball. There's a fastball but uh, that missed by a couple of feet up and away. On the count two and two. And that had to have been just a show me fastball there. I would imagine that Saunders is going to go right back to the breaking ball here. There's some kind of off speed pitch. Now we'll see. Saunders ready. He's very cagey. And now delivers. And there's a change up. And he missed low and outside ball three. So, yep. He went soft again. Now three and two. And now Michael Young will have the advantage. At the bag at first with two outs. And the count three and two. Saunders in a 1 1 game from the belt and delivers. Half swing at a breaking ball. It'll cost him a strikeout. Saunders back to back strikeouts here in the second inning. So they leave a man at first, and at the end of two, it's a 1 1 game in Texas on the Orioles Radio Network. And the second look for Nate McLeod. At you, Darvish, the right-hander from Osaka, Japan. McLeod takes a breaking ball for a strike. Squared, 
and then pulled back as that ball worked its way over the plate at 68 miles an hour. McLeod, seven home runs, 18 knocked in, a 268 average during the regular season for the Orioles. Did a very good job when Nick Markakis went down as he had assumed that leadoff spot. Pop up by the plate. The catcher Soto waits, and about 15 feet to the right of the home plate area in foul territory, the catcher makes the grab, and uh, McLeod is retired for the first out here in the third. JJ. Hardy will step in now. J.J., 68 runs driven in during the regular season. And he picked up the first Oriole playoff RBI since 1997 with that base hit back in the first inning. Against Texas this year, he hit 348. He had eight hits and 23 at-bats, including two of his 22 home runs. Right-handed batting shortstop, J.J. Hardy. And you Darvish, the 6'5", 215-pound right-hander on the way to J.J., Fastball in there for a strike. Darvish, we mentioned from Osaka, Japan. His dad was Iranian and his mom Japanese. The delivery on the way to J.J. And Hardy will take the breaky ball. And that misses outside, a ball and a strike. His mom and dad met here in the United States in St. Petersburg, Florida, as a matter of fact, while they attended Eckert College. Darvish on the way, one and one to J.J. in a swing and a foul back. There was the fastball at 90. So a ball and two strikes to Hardy. Growing up in Japan, he was an outcast because being a, a mixed parentage and a, a very tall, gangly kid. In fact, when he was a youngster, wanted to be a soccer player, or his dad wanted him to be a soccer player, but he saw baseball on television and fell in love with the game, and he's become a very rich young man by baseball and the delivery to J.J. and Hardy will swing and stay alive with a foul. So the count of ball and two strikes. In total, the Texas Rangers put out over $100 million to sign Yu Darvish from the Japanese leagues. Not only his money to sign, but also the money that they had to pay the ham fighters over there to allow this young man to come to the big leagues here in the United States. Yu Darvish. Came over with a lot of fanfare, and he's lived up to it. And right now, he's the best Texas pitcher. Darvish with a one-ball, two-strike count to J.J. One out here in the third. One-one ball game. And the delivery to Hardy, a little pop-up. Left side of the infield. Beltre, the third baseman, in on the grass, and he catches it for the second out. So two pop-ups here. One in foul ground to the catcher. This one between the lines, but to the third baseman. And J.J. is out number two. And that brings up Chris Davis. Chris Davis, of course, spent most of his professional life as a Texas Ranger farmhand or with the Texas Rangers for a long time. An elevator ride between the minors and the big leagues for Chris Davis. Lives here in the area. Said it was awfully nice to be able to sleep in his own bed in preparation for this series. But has certainly made his mark as a member of the Orioles. Leading the ball club with his 33 home runs and 85 knocked in. Darvish, the right-hander, on the way to the left-handed batter. Swing and a miss at a fastball. Darvish coming in again with that 90-mile-an-hour fastball to get ahead, 0-1. Davis had just a couple of hits against the Texas Rangers this year, going two for 17. Left-handed batter cocks that bat. Now waggles it as he awaits the pitch. Swing and a miss off speed pitch at 68, 0-2. And, of course, Chris will do that. He struck out his first at bat. He struck out 169 times during the regular season. Fans here in a big, big crowd on hand at Rangers Ballpark in Arlington. They were giving, uh, I guess, terrible towels before the ball game, and many of them helicoptering those white towels over their head as we await the 0-2 pitch. Darvish deals the pitch to Davis, and Davis swings and misses. He strikes him out. Fourth strikeout. For you, Darvish, the Orioles, for the first time in the ballgame, go one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the third inning in Arlington, Texas. Orioles one, Rangers one on the Orioles radio network. Well, back here in Arlington, Texas, the Orioles scored first an unearned run of the first inning against you, Darvish. And then a double play ball off the bat of Josh Hamilton brought in the Texas run against Joe Saunders in the bottom of the first. We go to the bottom of the third, 1-1, one, one, and it'll be... Uh, Craig Gentry getting a start. He's the ninth place hitter for Ron Washington. 
Gentry hitting over 300 during the regular season. Hit 304. One home run, 26 knocked in. Probably one of the best defensive outfielders on the Texas ball club, but getting the start tonight in center field. And that means that Josh Hamilton has been moved to left for tonight's ball game. So Gentry, who against the Orioles this year, went two for seven, will step in. Tonight, seven umpires being, uh, check that, six umpires being employed. There's no center field umpire. As we have umpires down the lines, and we'll give you the uh, rotation of the umpires coming up after this first pitch to Craig Gentry from Joe Saunders. Saunders has thrown 34 pitches to the first two innings, striking out the last two Rangers in the second. Here's the pitch to Gentry, shows bunt, pulls back, and takes a strike, 0-1. Well, Gary Darling calling the balls and strikes. Jerry Lane at first. Ted Barrett at second base. Bill Miller, the umpire, at third. Down the left field line, it's Greg Gibson. Down the right field side, it's Chris Guccione. So a six-man umpiring crew, and here's the pitch to Gentry. It's a ground ball to first. Off the glove of Reynolds. Reynolds will field, and he will not be able to pick it up and throw underhanded to Joe Saunders covering the bag. Well, it was between the bag and the first baseman. Out with the glove on the left hand was Reynolds. He stopped it, and then that ball took a crazy bounce away from Mark. He retreated to pick it up and then could not get the ball to Saunders covering the bag at first base. As he was down on both knees, he went back to get the ball, and then as he got there, he just couldn't grip it well. And so a runner at first base, Craig Gentry, leading off here in the third. That's going to be charged an error for Mark Reynolds. He had 11 of those during the year, but played marvelous first base for the Orioles down the red stretch. So both first basemen have committed errors tonight. And now here's Ian Kinsler, a walk and a run scored in the first inning. And Kinsler takes the first pitch for ball one. Well, that was a kind of a play that Reynolds has been making in his sleep. But, uh, hey, it's the postseason now. And he was marvelous uh, through uh, August and September. And now here's Kinsler, 19 home runs for the second baseman and a strike at the knees. Kinsler looks back at home plate umpire Gary Darling not liking that call. Nonetheless, it's a one ball, one strike count. Kinsler in that Oakland series, a sweep by the A's to claim the American League West title, went one for 12. And, of course, this has not been a good year all the way around for Ian Kinsler, defensively or offensively. And the throw over to first base, getting back is Gentry. Gentry, during the regular season, stole 13 bases in 20 attempts. There's a left-hander on the hill, and, of course, Matt Weeders behind the plate who throws out nearly 37% of the base runners attempting to steal. Saunders sets, looks over at the runner at first base, Gentry, delivers to Kinsler, a bouncer to the left side. It's going to be a double play ball as J.J. Fields gets it to Flaherty, who throws to first as Flaherty was chopped down at second base by the incoming runner, Gentry, but managed to get that throw over to first base, 6 Four to three for the double play. Nicely done by Flaherty, who is, as I said, chopped down by that incoming base runner. Well, Saunders got a break because he almost gloved that ball, but uh, he missed it by maybe a foot. And because he did, it was tailor-made to J.J. Hardy to get that double play ball. Hey, stay a step ahead with AT&T 4G LTE with speeds up to 10 times faster than 3G. AT&T, rethink possible. Elvis Andrews up. Andrews singled. To set up runners at first and third with nobody out in the first inning, but the next batter, Josh Hamilton, hit into a double play. It tied the ball game, but quickly two outs. Breaking ball strike call to Elvis Andrews. Well, for Saunders, got to feel great because Kinsler had been a 417 career hitter against him, that time a double play. And now Andrews watches one bounce in front of the plate to even the count of the ball and a strike. 1 1 ball game, bottom of the third. To the winner, they move on to play the Yankees. To the loser, it's wait until spring training. Joe Saunders, 31 years of age. Grew up an Orioles fan in Northern Virginia. Fastball outside. Attended Virginia Tech. Signed by the Angels as a number one pick. Then traded to the Arizona Diamondbacks. And the Orioles picked him up this July. And Saunders ready to deal. Here's the pitch. Fastball high and away again. So the count now three and one to Andrews with Josh Hamilton on deck. 
Elvis Andros. 286 average during the regular year. And the delivery to the shortstop. And there's a strike on the outside corner. Elvis tried to leave the batter's box and go down to first base. A yeah, good pitch. And it was a good pitch to send that count to three and two. 44 pitches now thrown by Joe Saunders. The three ball, two strike delivery to Andrews. A foul out of play off to the right side. So the count remains full. Three balls and two strikes. Andrews against the Orioles this year. Had 10 hits in 32 at bats. He worked out to a 313 average against the Birds. The Orioles went two and five against Texas in the regular season. And now the three two delivery again. Andrews on a breaking ball pulls it foul. Wide of the third base coach's box occupied by Dave Anderson. So we'll do it again. Three balls, two strikes. Gary Pettis, former big leaguer, in the first base coach's box for Ron Washington. Mike Maddox as their pitching coach. Texas Rangers, like the Orioles, 93 wins, 69 losses. The 3 2 delivery to Andrews. Line drive down the right field line. Davis will not be able to get it. He will cut it off before it goes to the corner. Andrews with Respect for that Davis arm makes the turn at first base and stops there. So he's two for two tonight. And Chris Davis got over quickly so the ball wouldn't go into the right field corner. And the Texas Rangers know all about the strength of that Chris Davis arm. So Andrews made the turn and stopped. And Davis got the ball back to the infield. Here's Josh Hamilton now. His double play ball brought in the only run of the ball game back in the first for Texas. During the course of the year, 43 home runs, 128 knocked in. A 285 batting mark for this possible future free agent. Lefty against lefty, it toss over to first base, getting back is Elvis Andrews, who stole 21 during the regular season. Left handed hitters during the course of the year hitting just 199 against Joe Saunders. And here's a lefty swinger right now. Saunders sets working from the extreme third base side of that pitcher slab swing and a miss at the breaking ball. Oh and one to Hamilton who will strike out. He's done that 162 times in the regular season. Josh Hamilton had that just marvelous game against the Orioles on May 8th going five for five four home runs eight knocked in 18 total bases and the pitch to Hamilton. He sweeps a foul off to the right side but of late his bat has been a bit quiet. He's Two for 13 in that key series out in Oakland. And now here he's in the hole. No balls, two strikes. We've well, seen a couple of real slow breaking balls here already. At first base, Andrews following his two out single. Saunders to deliver his 50th pitch of the ball game. The left hander will go over to first base with another toss. 1 1 ball game. Bottom of inning number three. The wild card game. Josh Hamilton stands very tall in that first base side batter's box. Rest the bat on the left shoulder. Now lifts it and the pitch. Fastball strike three call. That is the third strikeout for Joe Saunders. 0 for 2 is Josh Hamilton. I'll tell you what, for a great call by Matt Wieters after a couple of real slow breaking balls, fastball was the last pitch that Hamilton was expecting. And so the Rangers leave a base runner. We go to the top of the fourth inning here in Arlington, Texas. Orioles won, Texas won on the Orioles radio network. Here's Adam Jones. Adam, 32 home runs in the regular season. Popped out his first at bat. Right-handed pitcher, right-handed batter, breaking ball down and away to Adam. Of course, the most valuable Oriole for a second consecutive year. A tremendous year for Adam Jones. Against Texas this year, hit an even 200. He did hit one of his home runs against the Rangers. And the pitch to Adam. This misses low. Two balls and no strikes to Jones. Went five for 25 with a home run and a couple of runs knocked in. The Orioles here in Arlington during the regular year played three games and they won one of the three. They were one and three at the yards against Texas. The pitch to Jones, swing and a foul. Two balls and one strike. For you, Darvish, of course, his first year here in the States in the, the big leagues, but over in Japan, he pitched in several playoff games for his team the Nippon Ham Fighters and win eight and two in 11 postseason games there with a 138 ERA. The 26 year old delivers to Jones and a slow breaking ball in there for a strike. Adam took the stride but did not pull the trigger as that ball floated in at 68 miles an hour. 
And the count evens at two balls and two strikes. Well, some breaking balls you just cannot swing at. And for Jones, that was one of them. Darvish, two and two to Jones. And the pitch to Adam. He lifts a fly ball toward right center field. Cruz, the right fielder, over says he has it. He does. And that's out number one. So Jones is gone. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Matt Weeders, a strikeout victim. One of the four strikeouts for Darvish will step in now. Weeders went 3 for 11 in the Tampa series with four strikeouts. He did homer in that series. His career high 23rd. Second in the RBIs for the Orioles with 83. Adam third with 82 and of course Chris Davis led the ball club this season with his 85 runs knocked in. So Weeders a switch hitter batting from the left side where his power was during the regular year 18 of his 23 home runs as a left handed batter breaking ball high 1 and 0 that one coming in at 69 from Darvish Darvish has now thrown 46 pitches 50 pitches for Joe Saunders through his first three innings of work. The Darvish delivery to Weeders hit hard but foul between the bag and the coach's box first base side. And so the count now to Matt, a ball and a strike. Jim Tomey on deck for the Orioles. 1-1 one, one ball game. Each team scored a run in the first. Orioles scored an unearned run in the first inning. J.J. Hardy picking up the first Oriole postseason RBI since 1997. And then a Josh Hamilton double play ball in the bottom of the inning brought in the Texas run. One ball, one strike, the Weeders. Matt went down swinging to bring it in to the Oriole first inning. Weeders on the year, hitting 249 during the regular season. And the Darvish delivery to the Orioles catcher. And Weeders will swing and line it down the left side, racing over toward the left field corner is the left fielder Josh Hamilton. He will not be able to get it. And it is a foul ball in that left field corner. We lose sight of that ball from our vantage point. So a foul ball as we watch the umpire. And the count now one and two to Matt Weeders. Bidding for extra bases had that ball been fair in the left field corner. Foul by about uh, three, four feet down there. And so Matt will step back in. One ball, two strikes to Weeders. And now the fans not booing, but ewing for you, Darvish. Darvish says yes to the sign from Soto. One ball, two strikes to Weeders, one gone in the fourth. 1-1 one, one ball game. And the delivery to Matt Weeders down and in. And Weeders does not chase that pitch down toward his feet. Two balls and two strikes. Darvish gets the new baseball, rubs it up on the downside of the hill towards center field. Now we'll climb the top of the hill. Second baseman Kinsler a couple of feet on the grass on that right side toward right field. The whole infield shifted around a bit, but not in that uh, extreme shift. Here's a ball swept toward first base. Young, the first baseman, will field. He'll touch the bag out number two. And now Jim Tomey will come up. Tomey made a bid for a base hit leading off the second inning, but Ian Kinsler with a spectacular catch. Kinsler moving to his glove side left, went high into the air, diving toward the ball and made the catch. Taking away the base hit from Tomey. Jim Tomey, veteran, 42 years of age, 67. This is his 68th postseason game. 612 career home runs for Tomey. Three of them as an Oriole. And the pitch to the left-handed batting DH outside and high. One ball, no strikes. Of course, Tomey began the year with the Philadelphia Phillies. With the Orioles, this is his 29th game. Played 30 games in Philadelphia. You Darvish deals. And Jim Tomey takes a breaky ball inside. Two balls and no strikes. Darvish again with a new baseball will rub it up before getting ready to deal. Darvish stands tall, looks into Soto, gives a little bit of a nod, and now gets ready to work 2-0 to Jim Tomey. The pitch to the Oriole DH, base hit, left field side. It'll go toward the left field corner, up with the ball as Hamilton. Tomey has a two-out single here 
in the fourth. Well, Tommy, with that infield shifted around, but not in the extreme shift where you have three infielders to the right side, but they left plenty of room between the bag and the third baseman, and that's exactly where that ball went. Tommy going the opposite way for the base hit, and now Mark Reynolds will come up. Reynolds was up back in the second inning, was hit by a pitch. Hit on the right hand, but uh, so far not showing ill effects of that. And, of course, in the final game at uh, Tropicana Field on Wednesday, a ball came down on his foot, had an MRI on the foot yesterday. It showed uh, no breaks, but I'm um, still sure sore for Reynolds. Here's the pitch to Mark. Here's a high pop-up. Second baseman Kinsler at the edge of the grass now backs away and he makes the grab. So the two out single wasted by the Orioles as Reynolds goes after the first pitch and pops it to the second baseman Kinsler for the final out. We move on to the bottom of the fourth inning here in Arlington Texas Orioles one Rangers one on the Orioles radio network. In the Lone Star State for this uh, wild card Matchup between the Orioles and the Texas Rangers. 1-1 as we go to the bottom of the fourth. This spring, bring your big league dreams to life at the 2013 Orioles Dream Week, January 27th through February 3rd in beautiful Sarasota. Celebrate the 30th anniversary of the 1983 World Champion team as you play alongside former Orioles Rick Dempsey, Al Bumbry, Mike Boddicker, and more and experience full Major League treatment. For details, call 888-848-BIRD. Or visit Orioles.com slash Dream Week. For Texas, their cleanup hitter, Adrian Beltre, Nelson Cruz, and then Michael Young to go against Joe Saunders. 50 pitches through the first three innings for Joe. He's struck out three. He has walked one, and that walk came in to score. He walked the very first batter of the ballgame for Texas Kinsler, who scored in the first inning to tie it, and that's where we sit, 1-1. Beltre, a fly ball to center is first to bat. A one-hopper hit, sharply hit to J.J. at shortstop. Plays that bounce beautifully and then throws to first to get Beltre for out number one. Very steady play by J.J. We've seen it all year. He handles difficult plays and makes them look easy. Not very flashy, but he gets that job done time and time again. And that time, Beltre just smashed that ball on one hop, and J.J., Handled it cleanly to get the first out. Nelson Cruz, a ground out to the second baseman, Flaherty, his first trip. Cruz, 24 home runs during the regular season. Did not have it hit any against the Orioles this year. Pitched down and away. Of course, Cruz in postseason the past couple of years has been phenomenal. 14 home runs over the past two seasons in extra innings play, or I should say in postseason play, and he lines one to right field. A one-out base hit for Cruz going the opposite way. Now Michael Young, who singled his first at bat, will come up. Michael Young, at the end of the season, had hit in his last four games, going six for 15, including his eighth home run of the year. And now he comes up with a runner at first base. One out. Well, Joe Saunders has already induced two double plays. See if he can get number three right here with Michael Young at the plate. Nelson Cruz at first base and one out. And the pitch, breaking ball strike. Michael Young against the Orioles. Hit a measly 200 this year. And this guy, for many seasons, a lifetime 300 hitter against the Orioles. But this year, had difficulty. Six hits and 30 at bats, including one home run. Right-handed batter, left-handed pitcher, and delivery to Young way outside with a fastball. One and one. Young in his career against Saunders has now had 29 at-bats with 10 hits. There's a, we said earlier, always a perennial 300 hitter, but this year has been an off year for Michael Young. Regular season 277. Right-handed batter, left-handed pitcher, and delivery to Young. He swings and fouls it back. And the count now. On Michael Young, a ball and two strikes. If Young reaches, Mike Napoli will step in. So Saunders ahead. He has now thrown 56 pitches to the Texas Ball Club in a 1-1 ball game. Bottom of the fourth inning. Young stands deep in the box, bends at the knees. Or I should say flexes at the knees. And here's the pitch to the right-handed batter, low. 
Evens up two balls and two strikes. Young looking down at his third base coach. And now we'll settle back in that third base side box. Double taps the, the plate with the bat. Saunders hands together at the belt. Cruz a short lead at first. The pitch to Young. Breaking ball to hit to the right side beyond the dive of Flaherty into right field. Cruz will circuit toward third. Here comes the throw by Davis. The slide he's in. Davis with a good throw to third base, but the slide into the bag before the throw got there by Cruz. So back-to-back -back base hits. Runners at the corners for Texas. And here's Mike Napoli who took a called third strike as first at bat. Napoli drove in 56 during the course of the year. Mike Napoli, big, strong, right-handed batter. He can catch, he can play first base, but tonight, Mike Napoli DHing. So it's a 1 1 ball game. Runners at the corners, one out in the bottom of the fourth for Texas. And now the fans come to life here in Arlington. Napoli awaits the delivery from Saunders. Pitch on the way, and Napoli swings and misses at a high fastball. That pitch appeared to be shoulders high. 91 miles per hour in a swing and a miss by Napoli. Napoli during the regular season, a strikeout candidate 125 times. He struck out looking his first at bat against his former teammate with the Angels. Runners at first and third. One out to pitch to Napoli. Strike two at the knees. So Napoli let that one go by at 91, and he finds himself in the hole. No balls and two strikes. Giovanni Soto would be next. Cruz singled with an out, followed by a young base hit to set up runners at first and third. One down, 0 and 2 to Napoli. The left hander Saunders on the way to the right handed batter. Napoli swings and misses at a breaking ball. He strikes him out. Pitch out of the strike zone, down and in, and Napoli committed, couldn't stop, and he is gone. Fourth strikeout for Joe Saunders. Two Texas Rangers gone here in the fourth. Now, Napoli could not stop. That ball was breaking down toward his feet. And he had already committed. And he is gone. Second time he struck out against Joe Saunders. Now here's Giovanni Soto, who saw a lot of soft stuff. His first at bat, and he went down swinging. Soto, a right-handed batter. Runners at first and third for Texas. Two down now. 1-1 one, one ball game still. And Soto will take a pitch outside off speed at 84. 1-0 and to the right-handed batting catcher. Soto began the year wearing a Chicago Cubs uniform. Had struggles there offensively, hitting just 199 in 52 games. 47 games with Texas, a 196 average. Five home runs with the Rangers. And the pitch of the right-handed batter, breaking ball for a strike. Again, we see Soto seeing breaking stuff. Soto did hit a home run against the Orioles this year, going three for 10. Drove in four runs against the Birds during the regular season. Right-handed batter deep in the box. Runners at first and third, two out. Joe Saunders looks at the runner at first, delivers to Soto in the dirt. Two and one, another pitch coming in at 83 miles per hour. Soto in his career had Four hits and six at bats coming into this ball game, including a home run against Joe. Soto hits in the number eight hole for Ron Washington. He has runners at first and third, two out. One one ball game, bottom of the fourth. And now the Saunders delivery to Soto, chopped foul. Two balls and two strikes again coming in off speed at 83. So Soto not getting a look at that fastball. He saw one fastball in his last at bat, and it was well out of the strike zone. And they struck him out on a breaking ball. Let's see what happens in this at bat. Two balls, two strikes. Saunders got Napoli on a pitch in the dirt, a breaking ball. Now two balls, two strikes to Soto. Runners at first and third, two out the pitch. Soto bounces it to the right side. Flaherty will field shovel to J.J. They get the force out at second base. And uh, the storm is weathered by Joe Saunders, runners at first and third, one out. He strikes out Napoli. The final out comes on a ground ball to the second baseman, and they get the force out at second base. We go to the fifth here. 
in Arlington. Orioles won. Rangers won on the Orioles radio network. Back here in Arlington, Texas, we're about ready to go to the fifth inning. It'll be Flaherty, Machado, and then the top of the order, Nate McLeod. My pleasure to turn it back to Joe Angel. All right, Fred, here we go. Good ball game, 1-1 one, one game. And the Orioles at the bottom of the order, Ryan Flaherty, then Machado, then the top of the order, Nate McLeod, against a right-hander, you Darvish. Now, Flaherty in this game is 0 for 1. He became a strikeout victim his first time up. Flaherty, by the way, is, uh, is now hitless in his last 13 at-bats. Since that game against the Red Sox, in which he hit a grand slam and uh, an RBI double. Flaherty, a lefty against the right hander Hugh Darvish. And the pitch on the way. Flaherty takes that breaking ball inside ball one. Darvish has now thrown 56 pitches. The only run he has given up in this game in the first unearned. And now here's the 1 0 to Flaherty. Ryan takes one low for ball two. Looked like another breaking ball there. They count two balls and no strikes. Orioles here tonight get their first look at you, Darvish. And here comes the 2 0 pitch. Flaherty takes a fastball for a call strike. Adrian Beltre is at third base. Andrews is shortstop. Kinsler's at second. Michael Young back of the bag at first. And the catcher is Giovanni Soto. Darvish sets again. And the right hander with a 2 1 pitch. Flaherty takes fastball up and away. Missed by foot out there. So 3 and 1. Back in the first inning, Nate McLeod was on base on Michael Young's error and then stole second base and then scored on a J.J. Hardy single. And now Flaherty waits on a 3 1 pitch. Here it comes. And off speed, a strike on the outside corner. So three and two to Ryan Flaherty. Matty Machado waiting to hit next. Darvish standing tall looks in. In the outfield to play Flaherty to swing late. Three two pitch. Breaking ball swung out and hit toward left center. To his right is Gentry and he'll make the catch. And that's where Flaherty hit the ball out toward the left center. One away and now here's Manny Machado. 1-1 one, one game in the top of the fifth inning. Now Machado, his first time up, that ground ball to first base. Manny in the uh, three games at Tampa was 0 for 8 with a couple of walks. In this game, 0 for 1 against Darvish. And right now they're giving Machado a huge gap in left center. Pitch on the way to Machado. Big swing and a miss. Had a pretty good rip at it, but uh, couldn't find it. Strike one. Boy, that is a huge hole out there in left center. Here comes the 0-1 pitch. And the big breaking ball, a beauty. That big, slow, tantalizing breaking ball that looked like it took forever to get up to home plate, but uh, it dropped in there nicely. Call strike. So Machado now in a hole at nothing in two. And now Darvish ready again, delivers. And there's a breaking ball, swing and a miss. Got him. That time on a slider. So Darvish with his fifth strikeout in this game. Two up and two down in the fifth. And now the top of the order in Nate McLeod. Darvish had two strikeouts in that first inning. Then one in the second, one in the third, and now one in the fifth. And now again against uh, Nate McLeod in the uh, Texas outfield. They play him to swing very late. In the infield, they play him to pull the ball just a bit. And the fastball is in there. Strike to McLeod. 0-1. So against McLeod, the charts say that to the outfield, he swings late. To the infield, he swings early. There comes the pitch. And the ground ball pulled to Young at first base, underhand to Darvish to get the out. Well, ground out, and uh, the Orioles quickly go one, two, three in the fifth, and they do it very quietly. We head to the bottom of the fifth. 
The Rangers have 9, 1, and 2 coming up to hit in a 1-1 game on the Orioles radio network. And now here come the Texas Rangers, bottom of the fifth inning. We're tied up at 1-1. One one. Gentry leads off, then the top of the order, Kinsler and Andrews. 1-1 one, one game here at Rangers Ballpark. Gentry, his first time up, was on base on a Reynolds error. But there was no damage done. Fastball, fly ball, left field, shallow. McLeod coming in. Nate is there. Makes the catch, and Gentry going on one pitch. Well, each of the last two innings, Saunders has gotten the first out on one pitch. That helps. And now the top of the order comes up in Ian Kinsler. And congratulations to uh, KTBS Payroll and Kelly and Associates Insurance Group. They're going to donate over $50,000 this season to the R. Adams College Shock Trauma Center. Thanks to the outstanding work of the Oriole bullpen this year, they picked up over 50 saves. And of course, their generosity goes a long way to helping save more lives in our community. Kinsler takes ball one. Kinsler, his first time up, a walk and a run scored in that first inning. He takes outside ball two. And then his second time up, he came up with a man on base and grounded into a 6-4-3 double play. And now here's the next offering. Little ground ball up the middle. Hardy cannot get to it. That's a base hit. Jones feels it, gets it back into a Ryan Flaherty at the back at second base. So Kinsler, for the first uh, second time in this game, is on base. Remember, it had that walk back in the first inning. And now it'll bring up Elvis Andrews, the number two hitter. And this game tonight, Saunders so far has induced two double play balls. One of which knocked in a run back in the first inning. And then the other one hit by Kinsler in that third inning. Andrews two for two in this game. And is now four for seven in his career against Joe Saunders. Left-hander against right-hander. Saunders peers in, says yes. At the belt. And delivers. Andrews takes a fastball just off the outside corner. One ball, no strikes. Machado very shallow at third base. And again, J.J. Hardy and Ryan Flaherty at double play depth up the middle as Kinsler comes off the bag at first. The outfield, they play Andrews to swing a bit late. Here's the throw to first, and uh, Kinsler is back in their standing. Well, tonight, Joe Saunders, so far, so good. In a ballpark, uh, which for him has been nightmares. 1-1 game in the fifth. Andrews back in. Saunders ready, and again we will go to first. And that time he almost threw that ball away. Reynolds came off the bag, made a backhand grab. Otherwise, that ball is down that right field foul line. So a good play there by Reynolds. Elvis Andrews. One ball and no strikes. Mentioned Andrews, very tough to double up. He can run. Here comes a pitch. Little ground ball to J.J. Could be two to Flaherty. Out to Reynolds. Out. Double play for the third time in this game. Joe Saunders has induced a twin killing. That helps. And that's it for Texas in the fifth. End of five. It's a 1-1 game on the Orioles radio network. And uh, hello again, baseball fans. Joe Angel alongside Fred Manfred, mighty Casey Willett. Here in Texas, 1-1 game as we go to work now, top of the sixth inning. And the Orioles have uh, J.J. Hardy, Chris Davis, Adam Jones coming up to hit. So far, the only damage done against uh, you, Darvish, an unearned run way back in the first inning. Since that first inning, Darvish has allowed just one hit. He has yet to walk anybody in this game. He has hit a batter. He's also had five strikeouts along the way. So again, you Darvish, who been outstanding, was outstanding in the month of September, and pitching well again tonight. But Joe Saunders is hanging with him. He's had three double play balls in this game, and the only run he's given up came on a double play ball back in the first inning. So job well done. One one game. Let's get right back to Fred Mann. Well, thank you very much, Joe. It'll be JJ, Chris, and Adam Hardy, Davis, and Jones against. Darvish, who's thrown 66 pitches through the first five innings. Orioles so far today have stranded three. Texas has left four. Texas out hitting the Orioles 6-2 to two at this point. 
So the Orioles get their third look now at Yu Darvish, the 26-year-old from Osaka, Japan, and the delivery to J.J. up and in with a fastball. Hardy, a single in the first inning after Nate McLeod had reached on an error and stole second base, and that base hit right now has produced the Orioles' only run of the ball game, and it was an unearned run, a bouncer foul off toward the Oriole third base side dugout. One ball and one strike. J.J. Hardy has been outstanding as an Oriole since coming over from the Milwaukee Brewers. Appeared in seven postseason games with Milwaukee. J.J., a right-handed batter, the right-handed Darvish, and J.J. lines it toward right field base hit. So Hardy has two of the Oriole three hits tonight. Goes the opposite way. And uh, Hardy is on to start the sixth inning. Great job of hitting there by Hardy. A ball out away from him. And uh, he tried to pull that ball, maybe a ground ball to short. But he went with it, hit that thing off the end of the bat, and uh, went to the opposite field. That's a good job right there. And now Chris Davis will come up. Chris has been up twice in two swinging strikeouts. Of course, with Davis, it takes just one swing, and he can make people happy with that one swing. He did it 33 times during the regular season to lead the Orioles in the home run department. Davis, left-handed batter. Darvish, right-handed pitcher. Davis hitting 26 of his home runs against righties, and the pitch to Chris misses downstairs a fastball. Fans thought it was in there, but not so Gary Darling, just a little bit low. Soto tried to buy it by framing it, but uh, the umpire wasn't having any of it. Elvis Andrus, the shortstop, standing almost directly behind the bag at second base. Wide of third is Beltre, and here's the pitch to Davis. Ground ball, right field, base hit. J.J. will go to a, from second. He'll go to third base, so runners at first and third with nobody out. As Chris Davis gets his first hit, back-to-back -back base hits for the Birds. Now the Orioles have an opportunity here, a golden one, to take the lead with Adam Jones coming up. Well, the fact that J.J. Hardy was on base, got Davis that single because Michael Young was on the bag and could not get the ball in time. And now we have a big conversation on the hill. Elvis Andrus, the shortstop, Giovanni Soto, the catcher, and Hugh Darvis, the pitcher, engaged in conversation. And Adam Jones who had 82 runs during the regular season here, has an opportunity to give the Orioles the lead. It's a 1-1 ball game, top of the sixth inning. Jones' is first at bat popped up to the first baseman, Young. Second at bat, a fly ball out. And now it comes up with runners at first and third and no one down. Darvish looks over his shoulder at the runner at first base after looking at J.J., the runner at third. So Davis at first, Hardy at third base. Nobody out. Darvish pitching to the right-handed bat of Adam Jones and delivering all the way to Adam. Fly ball right field. Pretty well hit. Going back is Cruz. He will square. He'll make the catch. Tagging from third. Coming in to score the go-ahead run is J.J. Hardy. So a sacrifice fly off the bat of Adam Jones here in the sixth inning gives the Orioles a 2-1 lead over Texas. Staying at first base, Chris Davis. Going after the first pitch and drilling it toward right center was Jones. And it's now an Orioles 2-1 to one lead. And that brings up Matt Wieters. And again, a good job by Adam Jones because, again, the ball was out away from him. And Adam never tried to pull that ball. He went with it and got the uh, necessary fly ball. Matt Wieters has struck out and grounded out. And Soto's going to come out. Now something may be wrong with Darvish. During the latter stages of the season, Darvish was bothered by some neck problems. See the trainer coming out. We see the pitching coach uh, Maddox coming out and also Ron Washington, the skipper, coming out to talk to the pitcher. And uh, his like interpreters coming out now yeah. so that they uh, can make sure that they, well, the interpreter we've got to the <laughs> foul line and made a beeline back to the dugout. Said, never mind. Don't come out here. It looks like Darvish was uh, kind of tugging at his back. He's had the neck issue, but it looked like he was tugging at his back. Now there's a big conversation ongoing, and so far no movement one way or the other. And uh, let's see what the first base umpire, Jerry Lane, is going to go over to talk to Gary Darling, who's the crew chief. And now you know, all the umpires are going to get together here. All the umpires are coming in. All six of them will confer to the first base side of the pitcher's mound. You know, I'm wondering if they're um, if they're charging Ron Washington, but now they're going to bring the trainer, the interpreter out. out. Okay. okay. 
And well, now the interpreter, who had already made a one try to come out of that dugout, comes thought, out to the mound. I thought for a moment they were going to charge Washington with a visit to the mound, but it's obvious uh, an injury visit, so I guess uh, the interpreter will straighten things out. Well, that conversation has been going on quite a while. Now we see uh, Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, indicating they want some activity in the bullpen right now. You know, Fred, I was under the impression that Darvish spoke very good English. I think he does. Well, they want to make sure that this is uh, understood by all parties, I'm sure. Absolutely. And so Darvish is going to take a couple of – and now I see him twisting his neck. Yeah, now it's his neck, yeah. As <laughs> Darvish will take some throws to the plate. I guess it's all connected, huh? Yeah. <laughs> the elbow connected to the. Yeah. <laughs> so we have the Orioles scoring the second run for them in this ball game. Hardy led off with a single to right field. Davis a single to right field, setting up runners at first and third, and then Adam Jones with a sacrifice fly to right center to bring in the Orioles' second run. It's a two-one ball game. Looks like Darvish is talking to the interpreter right now after making several tosses to. Soto. Fred, the way he made those throws, uh, it didn't look good to me. It looked like he was doing it very gingerly. And now Darvish puts a little bit more mustard on yeah. that ball. Yeah, that time he did. And we're still having the conversation. We see Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, go back into the dugout. He may get on the phone to the bullpen. I thought I saw him indicate he wanted a left-hander to begin to warm out there. It's but okay. Dar yeah, Darvish is going to stay in. After quite a while, Conversations and pitches. But right now, no activity in the bullpen for the Texas Rangers. Now we do see one of the pitchers out there taking off a warm up jacket. So Darvish will continue on against Matt Weeders with uh, Chris Davis at first base, a run in and one out. Matt, as we mentioned, 0 for 2 tonight. And the Darvish delivery on the way to the Orioles catcher, it's low. One ball, no strikes. So the Orioles getting on the board here in the sixth inning. They scored an unearned run in the first inning. Texas answered with a run of their own in the bottom of the first. Since then, zeros on the scoreboard until this top of the sixth. The Orioles two runs on four hits, one error, a run on six for Texas against Joe Saunders. They've also committed an error that led to that run in the first inning. Quick throw over to first base. Almost caught Davis leaning the wrong way. So Adam Jones, who... Drove in 82 during the regular season. Third best on the ball club. Picks up a key RBI here in the sixth inning with the sack fly. Now, Weeders with a one ball, no strike count. The pitch to Matt. High drive. Center field. Actually, it's going to stay on the infield as the second baseman, Kinsler, will make the grab on the skin part of the infield for the second out. And now Jim Tomey will come up. Tomey has lined out, making a bid for a base hit. Kinsler pulled off a spectacular play to rob him. And then he went the opposite way down the third base side for a base hit his second at bat. Derek Collin the left hander begins to warm in the bullpen for the Texas Rangers. We are in the sixth inning. Seventy three pitches thrown by you Darvish in this ballgame. And now Jim Tomey comes up with two down a runner at first base. Davis inches his way from the bag at first the pitch to Tomey fastball up and in. Jim Tomey with that classic point toward right field now cocks the bat high above the left ear. The 1 0 pitch, Tomey swings and misses at a fastball. 1 and 1 to Jim. Earlier today, over in the National League in the wild card game, it was St. Louis defeating Atlanta 6 3 to earn the right to play the Nationals come Sunday. They will host the Nationals for the first two of that five game series. And the pitch to Jim Tomey. Down and in, two balls and one strike. This year they're going to have the wild card team and the team with the uh, lesser record host the first two games of that series in a best of five. And then the team with a better record or the division champ will have the final three games of the series on their home soil. Two balls and one strike to Jim Tomey. A runner at first base in Davis. The Orioles have scored a run here in the sixth to grab the 2 1 lead. Davis from first. Hugh Darvish with his 77th pitch of the night, and Tommy will take a strike on the outside corner. 89 mile an hour fastball. Two and two to Tommy. And now that uh, 
U chant will go up, and the Texas towels will be helicoptered over the heads of the fans here at the ballpark in Arlington. Two and two to Tommy. Davis at first, two out the pitch to Jim. Slow breaking ball, strike three call. Tommy frozen by that breaking ball at 64 for the strikeout. The sixth for Darvish tonight, but the Orioles back to back singles by Hardy and Davis to start the inning. And then Davis with a sacrifice fly to bring in with Adam Jones driving in uh, J.J. Hardy to give the Orioles the 2-1 lead here as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning at Texas on the Orioles radio network. You know, terrific job done being, being done tonight by Joe Saunders. He has given up one run. It came in the first inning. Since then, nothing for the Texas Rangers. They've had four hits. They've had a couple of opportunities. He's also induced three double play balls tonight. He's thrown 72 pitches. It'll be the left-handed bat of Josh Hamilton coming up. And out of the Oriole bullpen, the right-hander Darren O'Day begins to warm because we'll have Beltre and Cruz, two right-handers, following Hamilton. So far, Josh tonight, he hit into that double play in the first inning that brought in the only Texas run. Since then, a called strike three to the left-handed bat of Josh Hamilton. So he will come up against Joe Saunders. Hamilton now in his career, four for 12 against Joe with a home run. Saunders rocks, kicks, and delivers to the left-handed batting outfielder. A chopper right back to the mound. And as Saunders picks it up, throws to first, and Hamilton is gone on one pitch. Third consecutive inning that a Texas Ranger has gone after the first pitch of an inning, only to make an out. And now here's Adrian Beltre. Beltre a fly ball to center field and a ground out to shortstop. So a one pitch and Hamilton is 0 for 3 tonight. Adrian Beltre a very very dangerous hitter. 36 home runs. 20 of them here in Arlington and the Saunders delivery to Beltre fastball strike called. Beltre back in the fourth inning went after the first pitch and grounded out to J.J. at shortstop. Left handed pitcher right handed batter Beltre takes a fastball down and away a ball and a strike. Two to one Orioles here in the bottom of the sixth inning in the wild card game way outside two balls and one strike. For the winner it's on to play the Yankees for the loser you wait around till you go to spring training in February. Two balls and one strike to Beltre. Saunders will deal and Joe's delivery to the right handed batter high fly ball left field playable for Nate McLeod who comes in and over to his glove side left two gone in the sixth inning. That brings up Nelson Cruz Cruz is single and two at bats. The Texas Rangers remember a week ago they had a four game lead over Oakland and with Cruz coming up. Buck Showalter is going to go out to the mound and what a job done tonight by Joe Saunders. Saunders will go five and two thirds. He'll be giving the baseball to Darren O'Day but Saunders goes five and two thirds gives up one run on six hits. He strikes out four and the only batter he walked ultimately came in to score in that first inning when he walked Ian Kinsler to start the ball game. But Joe Saunders leaves having thrown 77 pitches tonight and he leaves with a 2 1 lead and he turns the ball over to the best bullpen in baseball the Orioles bullpen and Darren O'Day as O'Day makes his way in we're going to pause we'll be back to Arlington after these messages. Let's get back to Fred Manfred. Well thanks a lot Joe. Well one of the key parts of this Oriole bullpen that has been uh, really when you talk about why the Orioles win it's been the bullpen this year. And it's been Darren O'Day. This is he appeared in 69 regular season games giving up just 49 hits in 67 innings with a 228 ERA. He went seven and one out of the bullpen and now he's going to face uh, Nelson Cruz big strong right handed batter and Cruz takes a pitch downstairs. Ball one. This will be Nelson Cruz first look at Darren O'Day and of course Darren O'Day with that unique delivery can be very confusing to hitters. Right handed batter right handed pitcher swing and a miss. There was a kind of a frisbee type breaking ball that was upstairs and Cruz went after it. So 
Darren O'Day. There's a one ball, one strike count. Two gone, bottom of the sixth. The Orioles grabbed a 2-1 lead on a sack fly off the bat of Adam Jones in the top of the inning. Now Cruz will lift a little pop-up, shallow right field. Going out is Flaherty, the second baseman. He makes the one-handed grab. And that's it for Texas as O'Day comes out of the bullpen, the one-time Ranger, and retires Cruz on three pitches. We go to the seventh inning here in Arlington. Orioles with a 2-1 lead over the Rangers on the Orioles radio network. Joe Saunders, outstanding tonight. Saunders goes five and two-thirds, giving up one run. It was earned on six hits, four strikeouts, a walk, 77 pitches thrown, and more importantly, three double play balls thrown by the Orioles' left-hander. Mark Reynolds has been hit by a pitch and popped out in his at-bats tonight against Darvish. And the right-hander delivers to Mark. Reynolds hits a high pop. First base side, foul ground, drifting over near the stands is Young, and he will not be able to get it. It's about four rows out of his reach. Initially, looked like Young appeared as though he thought he might have an opportunity to make a catch, and then all of a sudden that ball swooped into the stands and a, a strike one to Mark Reynolds. Reynolds, Flaherty, and Machado for the Orioles here in the seventh inning. Two runs on four hits for the Birds. The, uh, they have an error and four left. One run, six hits, one error, four left for Texas. And the Darvish delivery to Reynolds. A breaking ball outside, a ball and a strike to Mark. Hugh Darvish, a 16-game winner in his first year in the big leagues. In September, three wins without a setback. And right now, the Orioles have him 2-1 to one in the seventh. The pitch to Reynolds. Breaking ball down and away, and Reynolds lets that 66-mile-an-hour pitch break out of the strike zone. Two balls and one strike. Reynolds deep in the box. Slightly open stance. Double taps the barrel of the bat on the plate. Now awaits the 2-1 pitch from Hugh Darvish. It's on its way, and Mark takes ball three down and away. Three balls and one strike to Reynolds, who is not opposed to a walk. He did it 73 times during the regular year. Flaherty on deck. Good hitters count, three and one to a powerful hitter when he makes contact. The pitch to Reynolds, swing and a foul. And that runs the count full, three balls and two strikes. And now this crowd that has been silent most of the night, save for two strike counts on Orioles hitters, may start making some noise. What to think about Darvish, three and one, give him a breaking ball. He'll do that to you. And now the fans start, but not as boisterous as they had been earlier in the ball game. With their team trailing two to one, the three-two pitch to Reynolds, swing and a miss. He strikes him out. Breaking ball. So Reynolds is the seventh strikeout for you, Darvish tonight, and that is the first out for the Orioles here in the seventh. Ryan Flaherty, one of those strikeout victims, he is 0 for two, struck out swinging his first at bat, and then a fly ball to center. His second look at Darvish. That's the thing about uh, Darvish. Uh, breaking ball three and one, a good one. And then three and two, another, not just a breaking ball, a real good breaking mm -hmm. ball in the ideal spot. Flaherty, left handed batter, and the pitch to Ryan. Bouncer foul off to the right side. Well, you can see why the Texas Rangers put out over $100 million when you consider the salary and the money paid to the ham fighters to get this guy to come to the United States. There were some doubters at the beginning when he was having difficulty throwing strikes, but boy, he is a good one. And now the 0-1 pitch and a swing and a miss. Darvish again with that pitch that comes in at 65 miles an hour. And the hitters wail away or are frozen by it. That time, Flaherty on the pitch took a big, long swing, and he finds himself 0-2. That's the same breaking ball that got Jim Tomey looking back in the sixth inning. It's just an unhittable breaking ball. It breaks so much, it floats up there, and uh, as a hitter, it's almost futile. So Flaherty finds himself down. Two strikes. One out in the seventh. Two to one, the Orioles lead it. And the Darvish delivery to the young second baseman misses down and in with that fastball. Fastball at 93. So you go from 65 to 93. And as Darvish got the throwback, he started moving his... Uh, Head from side to side. Remember last inning we had a pause in play. It appeared he had some neck problems, and that's been plaguing him during the last month or so of the season. But he continued on, and here he is in the seventh inning. He struck out Reynolds. He's one and two 
on Flaherty and the delivery to the youngster. Flaherty on that slow breaking ball just gets a tip of it and fouls it right at the feet of the catcher, Soto. So the count remains. One ball and two strikes. Again, coming in at 65. This time, instead of missing it completely, just got a tick of it to stay alive. Darvish with 88 pitches thrown tonight. Darvish stands in the middle of the slab. The 6-5 right-hander gets the side from his catcher, Soto. And the 1-2 pitch again. Flaherty swings and fouls it at the plate. Flaherty that time. Pitch a little bit uh, more velocity than the 65 mile an hour breaking ball came in at 80. That, that's why he's so tough. You know, he's uh, changed speeds on the breaking ball 65, 75, 80 miles an hour, all kinds of different speeds. And that slow breaking ball starts about shoulders high and it winds up almost in the dirt. Darvish again, one and two on Flaherty, a determined at bat for the youngster. And the pitch to Ryan. Bouncing ball, base hit, left field. Nice at bat for Flaherty. He will round first and stop there. Well, he kept battling, battling, and battling, and that time he gets the base hit, his first ever in the postseason. He is now one for three tonight, and that brings up Manny Machado, who is 0 for two tonight. I'll tell you what, Fred, I bet you that is one of his proudest at bats in a young major league career. And he is going to be pinch run for Robert Andino is going to go into pinch run for him and stay in defensively. So Flaherty should get high fives from his teammates as he goes into that Orioles third base side dugout. And indeed, he gets greeted as he gets in there. Nice job done by Flaherty. First Oriole to meet him was Nick Markakis. So Flaherty leaves and Dino pinch running at first base and will stay in defensively at second base. And now Machado, who is grounded out to the first baseman and struck out, will step in. Manny, young right-handed batter. The 91st pitch of the night will not come to the plate, but a toss over to first base and diving back is Andino. I thought that was interesting. The uh, first base umpire, Jerry Lane, just reminded Andino that there was one out. Hmm. I don't think he asked. Yeah. <laughs> nice of that Jerry nice to do of that. Him. Yeah. yeah. Darvish to deal to the right handed bat of Machado, bunts it on one bounce to the third baseman, barehanding it is. Beltre and Beltre throws to first to get Machado, but to second base goes Andino. Now Beltre was charging, and that ball was punched a little harder than maybe he thought it might be, and he fielded on the one bounce cleanly, barehanded, and then in one motion fired to first base. That's why that guy's a Gold Glover down at third base. But the Orioles have that runner at second base for Nate McLeod with two down here in the seventh. McLeod. Started things for the Orioles, and here comes Ron Washington with a left-hander warming in the bullpen. Washington, oh, the fans do not like this move. You can hear that. Well, Darvish has thrown 91 pitches tonight. He's giving up two runs, just one of them earned, and he leaves with a runner at second base. Now you listen to the crowd here at Texas and their appreciation of the job done by Darvish tonight. Not booze, but you is what many of these fans are cheering for their young right-hander. So Darvish goes into that first base side dugout. Left-hander comes out of the pen. We'll be back with the Orioles leading 2-1, a runner at second base. Two outs in the seventh here at Texas. We'll be back after these messages. You Darvish, outstanding six and two-thirds. He gives up an unearned run and another run on a sacrifice fly. Seven strikeouts, not a walk. Orioles ahead 2 1. Let's get back to Fred Mann. Well, lefty against lefty. The first pitch to McLeod is in the dirt. The ball bounces away from Soto. Throw to third, and Andino is in. Now, as that ball hit the dirt, Andino, the runner at second base, took off toward third base, and Soto, as he recovered, fired to third, but late. And the Orioles have that runner 90 feet away, representing their third run of the night. 1 0, Holland to McLeod. For Holland, during the regular season, 27 starts, 29 games. Holland pitched in that uh, loss for the Texas Rangers in Oakland on Wednesday. Went two and two thirds innings. Here's the pitch on the way and a fastball strike at the knees a ball and a strike. He gave up three runs on three hits in two and two thirds innings. Holland in the course of the year left handed hitters hit 243 against him righties 
likewise hit 243 against the Southpaw. Hollins pitched to McLeod in the dirt. Nice block by Soto. Two balls and one strike. And Derek Holland, the 25 year old, has a runner at third base. Two outs and the count two and one to Nate McLeod, the left handed batting Oriole left fielder, right handed bat of J.J. Hardy, who has had two hits tonight on deck. Holland peers in, gets the sign from Soto. Andino from third base. And the Holland delivery to McLeod. Line drive, left field, base hit. The Orioles lead it 3 to 1. And Dino comes in to score from third base. McLeod delivers against the left hander, Holland. And the Orioles now have a two run, 3 1 lead here in the seventh inning. Nate McLeod with a line drive into left field. And of course, that run charged to you, Darvish. So he will give up three runs tonight, two of them earned. Here's J.J. Hardy, who drove in the first Oriole run of the ball game back in the first inning, later collected a hit in the sixth inning in between a pop-out. J.J. Hardy has never had a hit against Derek Collin. He's 0 for 7 in his career with a couple of strikeouts. So Nate McLeod delivers a big blow here in the seventh inning, a single with two outs to drive in the third run of the ball game for the Orioles. Fast ball strike. Mentioned Derek Holland spent most of this season as a starter for the Texas Rangers. Holland sets the delivery to no nope, quick throw over to first base and Young handles a high hard throw over there. During the course of the year he went 12 and 7 with a 467 ERA. Holland works from the middle of the slab. Orioles lead this one 3 to 1. Six hits for the Birds tonight. And the Holland delivery to J.J. Fastball at the knees for a strike. And the count quickly. 0 and 2 to J.J. Hardy. Hardy with that open stance. Left-handed pitcher, right-handed batter. McLeod at first, another throw over there. Of course, McLeod in the first inning after reaching on an error. Stole a base to get into scoring position, and then J.J. Hardy brought him home with a base hit. So two batters into the ball game. The Orioles had a one nothing lead. Quick throw over by Holland, a terrible throw, and that will allow McLeod to get the second base. Holland, kind of a little flip toss high over the head and off the glove of first baseman Michael Young into that uh, foul territory down the right field side to allow McLeod to get the second base. So the Orioles have an opportunity here for another run here in the seventh inning with a runner at second, two outs, and J.J. at the plate. So McLeod has been in the middle of some pretty good action tonight for the Orioles. He's now at second base. That'll be the second error committed by Texas on that throw. Here's the pitch to J.J. in the dirt. Soto does a good job of smothering that one and keeping it at his feet and no advance made. By McLeod toward third base. One and two to Hardy. Darvish went six and two thirds, giving up the three Orioles runs. Two of them earned on five hits. Now McLeod is at second base with two down. Hardy swings at a breaking ball and misses for strike three. But the Orioles increase their lead to three to one on the Nate McLeod base hit. With two down the left field to bring in the pinch runner. Robert Andino and as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning it's the Orioles three the Texas Rangers one on the Orioles radio network. Well it was a determined at bat by Ryan Flaherty with one out in the seventh where he kept fouling off some really good pitches from you Darvish ultimately single that kind of set up the inning for the Orioles. And uh, later in the inning Nate McLeod brought home the pinch runner for Flaherty Robert Andino who stays in the ball game he is now at second base for Buck Showalter and the Birds. So the Orioles now nine outs away from heading to their round with the Yankees beginning Sunday at Oriole Park at 615. It'll be Sunday and Monday at Oriole Park if indeed the Orioles can hang on here 
against this Texas ball club. The Rangers were limited to a run on six hits through five and two thirds by Joe Saunders who struck out four and walked one also induced three double plays keys for the left hander who has never had uh, any success here really at uh, Arlington coming into this game he was 0 and 6 and six starts with a 938 ERA against the Rangers here in Arlington Texas but tonight one run through five and two thirds and then he gave way to O'Day who got the final out in the sixth. There's Michael Young now. Michael Young tonight two for two. That all against the left hander Joe Saunders. Michael Young against Darren O'Day a base hit and two at bats. Three runs six hits an error and five left for the Orioles a run on six two errors and four left for the Texas Rangers. Michael Young steps in. Right handed batter right handed pitcher O'Day the sidewinder sets pitches and Young will take it down and in ball one. Michael Young Mike Napoli and Giovanni Soto three right handed batters scheduled for Texas here in the bottom of the seventh. O'Day. Very deliberate kicks and delivers and Young will watch this one float over the plate for a strike coming in at 77. Darren O'Day gives you a lot of that slow breaking stuff and then his fastball busts in at uh, mid maybe 86 87 miles an hour. And the Texas Rangers who drew almost uh, three million three and a half million here this year forty six thousand three hundred ninety one here tonight for this playoff game. Here's a bouncer toward short J.J. will field the bouncing ball throw to first out number one here in the seventh inning. Mike Napoli will step in Napoli had no success whatsoever against this one time teammate Joe Saunders. He struck out twice against Joe. Mike Napoli big strong right handed batter. 24 home runs during the regular season. Napoli one for four in looks at Darren O'Day. Napoli will take a practice cut before stepping into the box. Napoli gets the toe hold. O'Day hands together and now the pitch and Napoli will take it outside. That was the fastball from O'Day. One ball no strikes. Now the Texas Rangers they were in first place 178 days in the American League West that was a major league high for number of days occupying first base fastball strike one ball and one strike not in Napoli as we mentioned earlier they had a four game lead over Oakland for that top spot going into the final week and instead of being the West champions wild card team along with the Orioles each with 93 and 69 records. O'Day's delivery to Napoli. Swing and a miss. Napoli goes after the high 86 mile an hour fastball and finds himself with a one ball, two strike count. Three to one Orioles. Bottom of the seventh inning, one gone. Napoli has already struck out twice in the hole, a ball and two strikes. Darren O'Day facing him for the first time. Deals and Napoli swings and chops one right back to Darren, who fields. He will flip underhanded to first out number two. Now Giovanni Soto will step in. Soto tonight a strikeout and a fielder's choice. Now we're going to have a pinch hitter for Giovanni Soto, Mitch Moreland. Mitch Moreland will pinch hit for Giovanni Soto. Before he does, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Orioles radio network. So the left-handed bat of Mitch Moreland, the pinch hitter. Moreland, 15 home runs, 50 knocked in, a 275 regular season average. Four for 18 with a home run as a pinch hitter. Facing Darren O'Day, and he takes a strike at the knees as it cut across the plate toward the inner portion of the plate. For Moreland, this is the first time he's seen that unique 
Darren O'Day delivery. Oh, and one to Moreland. Soto, by the way, was 0 for 2 against Joe Saunders. Moreland will take it down and away. One ball and one strike. Mitch Moreland hit 281 with 12 home runs against right handed pitching, but Darren O'Day is not your usual right hander with his unique delivery from down under. Now Moreland lifts a foul out of play off to the left side. Darren O'Day against lefties allowed them to hit just 207 against him. While right handers against Darren O'Day hit an even 200, so he's been tough on whether you hit from the right or left side. He's ahead. A ball and two strikes to Moreland. O'Day, who's retired the first three since coming out of the bullpen, delivers. Swing and a miss. Moreland goes down for the strikeout. So O'Day, out of the bullpen, four up, four down, picks up his first strikeout. And it's a three up, three down, seventh for Texas against Darren O'Day. We head to the eighth inning. The Orioles three, Texas one on the Orioles radio network. Well, an old friend will come out of the bullpen to work against the Orioles here in the eighth inning. Koji Wahara will pitch for the Texas Rangers. He appeared in 37 games during the regular season and pitched to a 175 ERA here in Texas. 20 hits and 36 innings pitched with 43 strikeouts for Koji. And as we go to this eighth inning, it'll be Chris Davis, Adam Jones, and Matt Wieters as the Orioles hold a 3-1 lead over Texas. Great job done by Darren O'Day. Got the final out in the sixth inning and then a 1-2-3 seventh. We go on to the eighth inning with the Orioles trying to protect their two-run lead and maybe build on it here as we go to the eighth once again. Here's Joe Angel. All right, for Koji. Man, was he good in September for this uh, ball club. He'll uh, go to work on Chris Davis. Koji, at one time, out of the bullpen, retired 25 consecutive hitters. And uh, gave up one hit among 31 hitters in that stretch as Davis takes the fastball up and in for ball one. Yep, Koji Ahara will go to work on Davis and then Adam Jones and then Matt Wieters, middle of the order, in a two run game. And now Davis takes the ball up and away. And Koji ended his regular season with 11 and two thirds consecutive scoreless innings. And now the pitch on the way to Davis uh, swung on and fouled away. By the way, Mike Napoli has now taken over behind the plate. He is now catching for the uh, Texas Rangers. Chris Davis in this game is one for three, a couple of strikeouts and a single. And I coach you with a 2 1 pitch. Fastball right there at the knees on the inside corner. Good pitch there, great location. Davis just watched it. They count two balls and two strikes. First Davis, 33 home runs in the regular season. Here comes the pitch. Half swing, see you later. And a ball that was up and in. Davis chased it, tried to check it, couldn't do it. And Koji strikes out the first man he sees. And now here's Adam Jones. That time Koji with that four seamer that, uh, think about Koji, very deceptive. And that ball, Davis just didn't know what to do with. Yeah, it was only 89. Yeah. So now here's Adam Jones. And the pitch on the way. And this one backs uh, Jones off the plate. Orioles ahead 3 1, top of the eighth inning. And on deck is Matt Weeders. What a job turned in by Joe Saunders tonight. It's his game to win right now. Here comes the pitch. Fastball, swing, and a miss. And that one also at 89. But again, Jones uh, a bit tardy with that swing. And the Koji throws, it's uh, much like Steve Johnson. He does surprise you. He's very sneaky. Here comes a pitch. Fastball above the letters. That time Adam wouldn't chase it. So now the count two and one. Now Jones here tonight, 0 for 2. But uh, back in the sixth inning, he came up with a runner at third base. Sack fly to pick up an RBI. Here comes a pitch. This one in the dirt, low and outside. So now Jones up to a pretty good situation, three and one. That fly ball that Jones hit uh, in the sixth inning to pick up an RBI put the Orioles ahead. 
At the time, two to one. It is now three one. Here comes the pitch. And grounded hard, but foul. Just outside the coaching box on that third base side. So it's now three and two. Well, when you look back to that uh, seventh inning, the key at bat was Ryan Flaherty. Boy, he put up a battle against you, Darvish. Darvish tried everything in his book to get him out, and he gets the base hit. Yeah. And now here comes three and two. Jones fouls it away off to the right. Adam Jones, going back to the regular season, has now gone 38 at bat since he last did a home run. And of course, at the end of the regular season, he wound up seventh in the league in hits. He wound up with 186 of them. Here comes the 3 2 again. Jones swing and a miss. He got him on a breaking ball. Koji strikes out two of his former teammates here. Two up and two down. And now Matt Weeders up there with the bases empty. Of course, uh, Derek Jeter led the league in hits. In fact, I think he led the majors in hits. Derek Jeter. He wound up with 216 hits. One of his better seasons at a latter age, too. And of course, uh, if things continue the way they're going right now, we're going to see Derek Jeter at Camden Yards on Sunday. Weeders takes a little bit low. Earlier today, in the wild card game in the National League, the Cardinals, they beat Atlanta 6-3. to three. Pitch on the way to Weeders, and there's that uh, changeup, and Weeders waved at it and missed it. And a big off-speed pitch. Weeders 0 for 3 in this game with a strikeout. Out there with a count of one ball and one strike. And now Koji delivers again. Weeders lines it toward the right field corner. That ball is hooking, hooking, foul. And I think he might have had the distance, too. But that ball right down that right field foul line kept on hooking and landed foul by just a few feet. Well, he got a hold of that fastball, the 89-mile-an-hour fastball. So Matt Weeders with a count of one ball and two strikes, and the fans here are standing, waving those towels. Koji with a pitch on the way. Weeders hits it hard right alongside Wayne Kirby behind the coaching box at first base. But it stays at one ball and two strikes. Now this Texas ball to these fans, they got to be very disappointed with the way the regular season ended. I mean, they had to... Uh, they had a five game lead with nine games left and they blew it. Here comes the pitch. Weeders takes the ball that bounces in. In fact, uh, the Rangers had a four game lead with only six games remaining and they blew it. They had a two game lead with three games remaining and they blew it. And they lost those three in Oakland and five of their last six were in the loss column. Amazing. And now they trail in the eighth inning of this one. Three to one. Here comes the pitch. And Weeder swing and a miss. Koji strikes out the side. Well, not very nice to his former teammates. But boy, Koji continues to dazzle late in the season and, and now in the postseason. And now here we go. Bottom of the eighth inning. Rangers have 9 1 and 2. Coming up to hit. Orioles ahead 3 1 on the Orioles radio network. 3-1. Here we go. Bottom of the eighth inning. And Darren O'Day comes out again. Remember, Darren came on in the sixth inning to get to Nelson Cruz on just three pitches. And then came back and got him 1-2-3 in the bottom of the seventh inning. A couple of ground ball outs and a strikeout on just 11 pitches. And now Gentry is scheduled to lead off here in the bottom of the eighth inning. After that, the top of the order. I wonder if he'll pinch hit Murphy here. Well, most likely they will. Murphy is the. Uh, well, we'll just wait and see here. Yep, it is uh, Murphy coming up as a pinch hitter. And by the way, left hander Brian Mattis is warming up in the bullpen just in case this inning gets to Josh Hamilton. And he is scheduled to hit fourth this inning. Orioles are ahead three to one. David Murphy, strictly a left hand hitter, against right hander Darren O'Day. And the pitch on the way. Murphy takes low and outside, ball one. 
Manny Machado is at third base. Hardy at short. And Dino is at second base. Reynolds is at first base. Weeders has caught the entire game. Andy Chavez is now in right. Taking over from Chris Davis. And the pitch on the way. There's a breaking ball of beauty in there for a call strike. Well, Murphy had a good regular season hitting over 300 with 15 home runs and 61 knocked in and three for 11 as a pinch hitter with one of those home runs. Well, he wound up 10th in the league in hitting at the end of the season. Outstanding season. Here comes Murphy. Ground ball. Right side. Randall's a backhand. Underhand to O'Day to get the out at first base. Good. Well done there by Reynolds. Able to backhand the ball. And then on the run, feed O'Day to get the out. And that's one in the eighth. Now the top of the order comes up in Ian Kinsler. Now Kinsler tonight has had a walk, a double play ball, a single, and after his walk in the first inning, scored on a double play ball. The only run that left-handed Joe Saunders gave up in this game. Saunders along the way induced three double play balls, including the Hamilton double play ball back in the first inning. So here's Kinsler against Darren O'Day. His previous three at bats all came against Saunders. O'Day ready again. Machado even with the bag at third. And the pitch. Kinsler takes a fastball upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Mentioned Kinsler, one, uh, one for two in this game. And coming into this game, four for 31 to close out the regular season. Here it comes. This one is a strike. Picked up the inside corner at the knees. Kinsler among the leaders in the American League in doubles. He also led the league this season with seven leadoff home runs. So he, he can be dangerous. Wound up with 19 home runs. There's the pitch. Little breaky ball. Little line drive. One hopper back of the mound. Hardy in and dropped the ball. And for J.J., kind of a do-or-die play. A little twisting liner over Darren O'Day. Hardy came charging in. Tried to glove it on the run and never came up with the ball. And that's one of those you have to do it in one motion. And unfortunately couldn't get the handle on the baseball. Now that ball, when it landed a couple of times, it was still spinning. Well, that should be an infield single. And now here's Elvis Andrews to hit with only one out. And now Hamilton is on deck. But again, Brian Mattis is warming up just for him. There was no way that Hamilton was going to see a right hand pitcher in this game. So here's Andrews. Odea look at first. And the pitch. Low and inside to Andrews. One ball, no strikes. Andrews, a couple of hits tonight, two for three. His only out on a double play ball against Saunders back in the fifth. And that one went six to four to three. And the ball hit right to J.J. Hardy. One and oh the count. And O'Day delivers. Fastball in there for a call strike. Orioles ahead three to one bottom of the eighth inning. Andrews outside the box and now digs in again. He's got a very wide and a very square stance. And after a couple of practice swings, he'll cock the bat. O'Day will look at first as the right-hander sets. And he'll go to first base. Too late. Kinsler lunging back in the bag. Of course, Kinsler during the regular 21 steals, but that's off of what he's been doing in the past. He's been a 30-30 man for the past couple of years until this season. Well, his batting average only 256. So just not as many hits. And not on base as often as he is accustomed to. One and one to Elvis Andrews, and now O'Day sets again. Kinsler off the bag at first. O'Day ready. Long set delivered. There goes Kinsler. And the pitch is swung on and fouled away. And the seats down there behind first base, back of the lower deck. So on a hit and run, Kinsler back to the bag at first. And now it is one and two to Elvis Andrews. Now the Orioles who of course uh, in the regular season they lost six out of eight against Texas. They were outscored in those games 56 to 24 
but in this game they lead three to one in the eighth inning. It's all about pitching and tonight the pitching outstanding. Andrews digs in O'Day taking plenty of time in the regular season in close games the Orioles won and now time is called in the regular season the Rangers when they beat the Orioles they won 14 to 3 10 to 3 7 to 3 12 to 3 that give you an idea that's what Ron Washington talked about yesterday about pitching 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 that would be this game and it's been good pitching on both sides but the Orioles have been a bit better one and two to Elvis O'Day again sets and again to first and he threw the ball away right past Reynolds chasing it down to Zandino and there goes uh, Kinsler into second base on a throwing error by the pitcher Darren O'Day on the attempted pickoff. And it takes away the double play possibility. It almost assures that Hamilton will hit this inning. That looked like it went right through the legs of Kinsler as he tried to stretch back to the bag at first base. And with that runner coming in, almost prevented Reynolds from being able to reach the ball. Now, Rick Adair, the pitching coach, is out there now. Mentioned Brian Mattis is warmed and ready in the bullpen with Hamilton lurking in the on deck circle. Orioles ahead three to one, bottom of the eighth inning. Andrews with a count of one ball and two strikes. Well, Darren O'Day doing his best to uh, keep Kinsler close to the bag and maybe keep the double play in order, but he threw the ball away. Andrews standing just uh, on the outer edge of the hitting circle. And now making his way back toward the batter's box. And now back in there. O'Day takes a look. Runner at second base, only one out. O'Day ready. And after a look at second base, he delivers. Breaking ball, hit a one hopper to JJ. Two hopper. JJ has got it on the first to get the out. And Kinsler couldn't go anywhere. Out number two. And now here's Hamilton. And Buck comes out. And he's going to bring in Brian Mattis. And apparently they're going to pitch to Hamilton with first base open. He does represent the would-be tying run. But uh, that's the worst case scenario. The worst thing he can do is tie the game. So Brian Mattis, who has become, if you will, a shutdown left-hander out of the bullpen, he's coming in to try and shut down Hamilton here in the bottom of the eighth inning with a runner at second base and two out. Toriel's ahead 3-1, to one, a pitching change. Back with more play-by-play -play after this. Brian Mattis, 18 relief appearances, a 135 ERA. He delivers to Hamilton, fastball for a call strike. Mattis, as a reliever, inherited 14 base runners in the regular season and stranded all of them. Now, what's the pass numbers? 0 for 9 for Hamilton with five strikeouts against Brian. 0 and 1 the count. Here it comes. Hamilton, swing and a miss. Fastball. At about 92, Hamilton couldn't catch up to it. And the count nothing in two. Yep, Hamilton tonight, a double play ball, a strikeout, and a comebacker. He's had a tough night. He, he had a very tough September. Well, the count nothing in two. Mattis again ready. He'll check the runner. Here it comes. Point and a miss. Struck came out. Fastball 93. Brian Mattis comes in. He strikes out Hamilton on three pitches. He just overpowers him. And for the fourth time in the game tonight, Josh Hamilton is getting booed in Texas. He goes down on three. And Mattis again gets it done. End of eight. Orioles ahead three to one on the Orioles radio network. Now we're back in Texas and now the uh, ninth inning of this uh, wild card playoff game. Or what they call they used to call the uh, the entry game. But I guess uh, that's no longer the case. This is a playoff game. To continue in the playoffs. Winner here tonight, take on the Yankees on Sunday. Of course, if the Orioles win, they'll take on the Yankees Sunday evening at Camden Yards. Uh, what did Buck say about this game? He said it's not called sudden death. They're looking at it as sudden life. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the Orioles have Jim Tomey to get things started in the top of the ninth inning. Right hander Joe Nathan comes on to pitch. 
And David Murphy is now in left. After coming out as a pinch hitter. So the Rangers have Beltre at third, Andrews at short, Kinsler at second, Young at first, Napoli is now the catcher, Murphy in left, Gentry in center, Cruz in right. And Tomey takes ball one from right hander Joe Nathan. Nathan, the Texas closer. Jim Tomey in this game is one for three. A line drive out, a single, and a strikeout. And he takes a fastball for a call strike. Nathan wound up with 37 saves in the regular season. And by the way, fifth in the American League. And Tommy takes a breaking ball too low. Of course, he did have a couple of blown saves in the last six regular season games. And one of those, a big one against Oakland. Everybody in Baltimore watched it. It was at Oriole Park at Camden Yards. Uh, Tommy takes the fastball right there at the knees. That's a call strike. Watch Torrey Hunter get that base hit to drive in, too. And then he came back and he also pitched in the next game. So Tommy waits. The count two and two. Orioles ahead, 3 1, ninth inning. Here comes the pitch. Tommy off the hands, a little ground ball foul off to the right. And it stays at two balls and two strikes. Now, the last time Jim Tommy played in a World Series, 1997, with the Indians. And right now, thinking about getting back. Out there, two balls and two strikes. And now Nathan again delivers. Tommy takes a ball that bounces in, hit the dirt. They count three and two now. Of course, uh, Jim Tommy this season became the uh, fourth player in the history of the game to have hit at least 100 home runs with four different teams. Now that's longevity. Tommy now at the age of 42. Out there with a count of three and two now as Nathan ready and delivers again. And Tommy gets a walk with a low fastball. And now we'll see what Reynolds is up to with nobody out. Orioles ahead 3-1 in the ninth. Now I don't imagine that Reynolds is going to be bunting. Although you never can tell. I mean you're ahead 3-1 ninth inning. Getting one more is not a bad idea. Yeah, I'd like to have that uh, margin of error. And of course, J.J. warming in the Oriole bullpen. Now, Adrian Beltre is backed up in back of the bank at third base. Reynolds uh, in this game been hit by a pitch. He has popped out and he has struck out. And uh, he takes a fastball just off the outside corner. And Reynolds only four hits in his last 37 at bat. So right now he's not uh, exactly hitting the ball real hard. And Mark 0 for 2 with two strikeouts yep. against Nathan. And again, Beltre backed up at third base. Tommy on the bag at first. Here comes the pitch, and Reynolds takes outside ball two, two and them. Of course, Reynolds in the regular season, seven home runs against the Yankees, and uh, he could see them Sunday evening at Camden Yards. Reynolds back in, two and oh, the count. Nathan takes a look at the right hander sets at the belt. Tommy off the bat. Here comes the pitch. Reynolds swing a foul tip off the mask of the catcher Mike Napoli. Well, that ripped the mask off Napoli. Of course, Reynolds this year, 23 home runs. Last year, he wound up with 37. And now with a count of two and one. The Rangers employ a bit of a shift against Reynolds on the left side. The second baseman Kinsler is still to the right of second base but well over. Nathan with a 2-1 pitch. Reynolds popped it foul to the lower deck down there behind first base. To the back of the lower deck. So now it is two and two. Texas Rangers right now in their third consecutive postseason. Of course the last two as World Series participants, but losers in the World Series. Rangers with a losing record in the postseason. There comes the pitch. Reynolds 
popped it foul back toward the second level right back there behind home plate. Now midsummer when everything was hitting on all eight cylinders fans were thinking about another trip to the fall classic here and now they're just three outs away from being eliminated before they get to the divisional series. And of course uh, Jim Johnson is out there getting loose. Reynolds with a count of two balls and two strikes. Jim Tomey on the bag at first with nobody out. Orioles ahead 3 1 in the top of the ninth inning. And now Reynolds again will cock the bat. Here comes the pitch. Reynolds, big swing and a foul tip. That time he got the breaking ball, and Reynolds just nudged it. So it stays at two balls and two strikes. I mean, the Rangers, in the past 43 postseason games, they have gone 19 and 24. So getting to the postseason, they've done a good job. But accomplishing in the postseason, they've come up short. Here comes the pitch. Reynolds popped it foul. Again, that'll be a, a postseason souvenir. It stays at two balls and two strikes. As we look around uh, Rangers ballpark here in Arlington, a lot of fans have uh, made their way from their seats. A lot of empty seats right now. Well, 46,391, the paid crowd tonight. In the regular season, 3,460,000 attended. First time the Rangers have ever gone over the 3 million mark. Reynolds waits, two and two. There it comes. A little chopping foul, third base side. Another breaking ball. So it stays at two balls and two strikes. And Reynolds has had an extended at bat. Jim Tomey an extended at bat and drawing the walk. And now 15 pitches thrown without an out for Joe Nathan. Our deck is Robert Andino who has yet to hit this in, uh, this ball game. Remember he came on defensively. He came on as a pinch runner and then stayed in the game out there at second base. So he has yet to hit. He is on deck. Right now Reynolds trying to find a way to get Jim Tomey over with nobody out. And now the 2 2 from Nathan is swung on and this struck came out. Fastball there at 93. And Reynolds goes down on strikes. And now here's Robert Andino with one out. Well, Reynolds made him work, but ultimately he does strike out. Now here's Andino. And now Beltre is going to play up at third base. Andino could bunt. Right hander against right hander. Three to one Baltimore in the ninth. Nathan delivers and Dino swings right through a breaking ball. Strike one. On deck, Manny Machado. Now the Orioles should be getting back to Baltimore at about four, maybe 4.30 in the morning. Either way, they're heading back to Baltimore after this game. Here comes the pitch. And Dino swings again, a little breaking ball, foul tip, strike two. I'll tell you what, Robert Andino, his first uh, postseason at bat, he's not getting cheated. And now in the hole at no balls and two strikes. And once again, the fans getting into it here in Texas, but so far tonight, they've had little to yell about. Orioles are ahead 3 1. Still very much a ball game. Johnson getting ready in the bullpen. Robert Andino waits on an 0 and 2 pitch. And Nathan delivers it. Breaking ball. And Dino lays off just a little bit low and outside the ball. Pretty good pitch. And for Andino, that's a real good take with two strikes. That had to be tempting. Yeah, Robert's a pretty aggressive hitter. He goes after a lot of those type pitches, but held back that time. And Dino back in. Nathan takes a look. Tommy off the bag at first. Here it comes. And Dino takes it low. So two and two. And Nathan has now thrown 20 pitches this inning. Robert Andino, two balls and two strikes. The Orioles there tonight scored an unearned run back in the first inning. Another run on a sack fly. And the other run on a McLeod single. Andino hits it hard to deep left. Racing back is Murphy. He's looking up and it bounces off the scoreboard. Jim Tommy to third. He's in there. And Dino racing into second base. He's got a stand-up double. 
off the scoreboard in left field. And the Orioles have runners on second and third with only one out. Yeah, this uh, runner at third base, that run at third base is big. And let's see if we're going to have a pinch runner. I think we are. Lou Ford is going to pinch run for Jim Tomey. And Manny Machado will come up to hit now with only one away. And Mike Maddox, the pitching coach, is out there to converse with his right-hander, Joe Nathan. But well, we just said Robert Andina wasn't getting cheated. <laughs> he swung real hard. And that time, uh, on that third strike, he hit the ball real hard. Had he been able to lift that ball just a bit, that ball would have gotten out of here. So now the uh, conversation has ended, and Mike Maddox back in the Texas dugout. And now Machado to hit with runners on second and third. And the Rangers are going to bring the infield in. And if you're Manny Machado here, you've got to be licking your chops. In this game, he's 0 for 3 with a sacrifice bunt. So Ford is at third base, the pinch runner. Nathan delivers. Machado takes the ball just off the dirt. One ball, no strikes. So again, Beltre, Andrews, Kinsler, and Young all in toward the edge of the infield grass. Ford at third base, and Dino at second. Orioles ahead three to one. Machado can make it much more comfortable in the ninth inning, the bottom half. Nathan ready again. He'll check third. Ford off the bat. Here's the pitch. Machado in the dirt. On the third. Ford gets back. Napoli came up throwing, made a good throw, but Ford got back in there safely. So Machado now with the count of two ball, uh, check that one ball and one strike. And again, the infield in. Outfield very shallow. They're trying to cut off the base hit. Nathan Reddy will look at third again. And the right-hander again delivers. Machado in the dirt again. Takes it low and outside. Look at three and oh. McClough is on deck. Yep, check the count. Two and one, I beg your pardon. Two and one is the count to Manny Machado. So Nathan trying to keep Lou Ford at the back at third. Machado, really, all he has to do is just get the ball in play and hopefully not at somebody with the infield in. Here comes the pitch. Machado swings right through it. Fastball there at 94. He was late on. And Machado took a very long swing and missed it, so the count two and two. Now, a laborious inning for Joe Nathan. This will be his 26th pitch of this inning, and he's retired just one Oriole. Well, I'm sure he feels right now he's got all winter to rest. He's got to get Machado to give the Rangers a chance in the bottom of the inning. And here comes the pitch. Machado gets a piece of it, fouled it right back to the backstop. So it stays at two balls and two strikes. The Orioles took a one nothing lead in the first. The Rangers came right back to tie it in the first. Adam Jones sack fly, put the Orioles ahead in the sixth. And then McLeod single gave him a two run lead in the seventh. Three to one Baltimore in the ninth. Machado waits on a two and two pitch. And Nathan delivers it. Machado line drive off the glove of Andrews. That's a base hit to left. Ford is in, and Dino's going to stop at third. The ball back in. Machado a single off the glove of Andrews to pick up an RBI. It is four to one Baltimore in the ninth inning. And more breathing room with that bottom of the ninth looming for Jim Johnson. Elvis Andrews almost caught the ball off the edge of his glove, and that ball got into left. And that was a pitch that was downstairs, and a nice follow to the ball by Machado as he went down to get it and sweep it to the left side. So Manny Machado, his first postseason RBI to give the Orioles a three run advantage, and now with runners on first and third. It'll bring up Nate McLeod. And Nate's had a big ball game tonight. His first time up, he was on base on an error and then stole second base and then scored on a single by J.J. Hardy. In the seventh inning, he knocked in a run with a base hit. Now left-hander Michael Kirkman is warming in the bullpen for Texas. 
So Nate uh, tonight one for four with a run scored an RBI and a stolen base. So Nathan sets again. And the pitch McLeod shows bunt but he takes a breaking ball in the dirt maybe a safety squeeze. But he took ball one. And now McLeod again checking with uh, DeMarlo Hale in the coaching box at third. On deck is J.J. Hardy. Nathan again will toe the rubber. McLeod back in the box. Machado off the bag at first. And Dino off the bag at third. And Nathan from the belt. He delivers to McLeod. Low and inside ball two. Two and oh. Adrian Beltre at third base right now even with the bag. The middle of the infield at double play depth. Michael Young on the back at first and holding with Machado. And now the fake to third and then the look to first but no throws. Well Buck Showalter made a very gutsy decision starting Joe Saunders in this game if you Looked at his numbers in this ballpark and against the Rangers. Yep, a gutsy move. McLeod takes low and inside ball three, three and zero. Oh. Well, Saunders made his manager proud. Well, it was the choice, Steve Johnson or Joe Saunders, and Buck said he was still a little concerned about the knee of Steve Johnson, but he went with the experience, and it paid off. Saunders five and two thirds, one run. And the pitch to McLeod. Nate hits it hard but foul just over the coaching box on that first base side. So Nate got the, the go ahead 3 0 and he pulled it foul. So now 3 1. Darren O'Day came in. Outstanding work again by Darren O'Day. Two innings, gave up one infield single. That's it. Well, you look back on the regular season, the bullpen has been so strong and so key to so many victories for the Orioles. Well, that's why they went 16 and 2 in extra innings and all those one run wins. Here's the pitch McLeod, fly ball into left center, pretty deep. That's your drive and a run. Gentry is over to make the catch, and Dino will tag, and he will come in to score. 5 to 1, Baltimore. And now they have really dug deep into the heart of the Texas Rangers. And a hardy to hit with two outs. And how about Nate McClough? Tonight he's been in on everything. And he scored the first run, and he's driven in two since. Got a stolen base. Now here's Hardy. And the pitch. J.J. takes a strike on the outside corner. That was the 33rd pitch that Joe Nathan has thrown here in the top of the ninth. And the closer who was supposed to keep the door closed on the Orioles has given up two runs. And many of the 46,000 fans here, they're, uh, they're leaving. They're, they're on their feet. And they're walking out. Go to first too late. Many of the fans along that lower deck, they're, they're making their way up the stairs. Five to one Orioles in the top of the ninth inning. Here with a two-run ninth. Hardy with a couple of hits. He's gone two for four. Remember, he knocked in the first run back in the first inning. And he takes a knee-high strike. So Nathan against J.J. Hardy. No balls and two strikes. Nathan again standing tall looks in. Machado off the bag at first with two outs. And Nathan throw to first. Machado diving back in safely. J.J. Hardy who's had another sensational defensive season. And should be in line for a gold glove. Here's the pitch Hardy lines it right at the second baseman. Kinsler makes the catch side retired but Orioles get two. And now Jim Johnson will inherit a five to one lead as we go to work now in Texas bottom of the ninth inning. 
Orioles ahead 5-1 to one on the Orioles radio network. Beltre, who had uh, an outstanding September to close out the regular season, hit about 340 in September with 11 home runs in that month and wound up with 36 for the year. Johnson delivers a fastball for a call strike. And right now the Rangers need a bunch of base runners. Orioles are ahead 5-1. to one. And now the 0-1 pitch. Beltre fly ball into center. Pretty deep. Jones got a beat on it. Adam is there. Backing up a bit to make the catch. High long fly ball out. One away in the ninth. And right now the Orioles can almost smell the Yankees. Now I didn't mean anything in particular by that. Just the fact that they can almost smell the Yankees whom they would meet on Sunday evening at Camden Yards if they hang on to a lead here. And here's Nelson Cruz Johnson's pitch fastball at the letters that's a call strike. So Jim Johnson has come out throwing strikes 0 and 1. Cruz tonight one for three a single. And now the 0 1 pitch. There's a breaking ball swing on a line drive and a base hit to left field. So McLeod will get it back into second base. That time with a breaking ball. And Nelson Cruz timed it nicely for that base hit. And I would imagine right now Johnson had that good fastball going, that good sinker again. Maybe uh, second guessing himself a bit for throwing that breaking ball. Although it did not look like it was all that bad a breaking ball. Just a pretty good job of hitting by Nelson Cruz. So now here's Michael Young. And of course what Jim Johnson does best is throw that hard sinker that gets him a lot of ground balls and maybe a double play ball. Here comes the pitch. Young takes way upstairs. One ball and no strikes. And on deck is Mike Napoli. And the pitch on the way. There goes the runner. Ground ball toward the second baseman. Robert Andino will have to go to first base to get the out. So they sent the runner. And by sending Cruz, they stay out of what would have been a game-ending double play. That ball hits sharply right to Andino. But they do get the out at first base. Young is retired 4-3. And now here's Napoli to try to extend the season for the Texas Rangers. Napoli in this game is 0-3. A couple of strikeouts. So Johnson with a runner at second base and two outs. Infield backed up all the way. Johnson at the belt. And delivers. And Napoli will take a call strike. Napoli with 24 regular season home runs. So he's got power, but right now it's 5-1 to one Baltimore in the ninth. Johnson will check the runner at second and delivers. And Napoli swings and misses. Fastball there at 95. And he had that thing right around knee high. Not easy if you're a hitter to try to hit a bowling ball that's going about 95 miles an hour. But that hard sink. 0-2 the count. Johnson ready. And here it comes. Swing and a foul tip. He just nudges it to stay alive. 0-2. Now for the Texas Rangers, if they lose this game, it's going to be a long winter. They had their division title just about wrapped up until they didn't. Johnson takes a look. 0-2 the count. Runner at second base with two outs. And here comes the pitch. Breaking ball, but he bounces it. Spiked it in the dirt. Now it is 1-2 to Mike Nampley. Again, Machado deep at third. Hardy and Andino up the middle. Reynolds back at the back at first. Matt Wieters caught the entire game. McLeod, Jones, and Chavez in the outfield left to right. Jim Johnson on the hill. One and two the count. And here it comes. Swung on a sinker and fouled away. A little grounder off toward that third base dugout. It stays at one ball and two strikes. All the fans here at Texas are standing. And right now they've all got their fingers crossed. Mike Napoli trying to extend the inning, trying to extend the season. 
Up there one ball and two strikes. Johnson the look says yes. He'll check the runner at second. And now he delivers one and two. Fastball is low just off the top of the dirt. Two and two the count. And now Napoli back in. There. Johnson on the rubber first base side. Nelson Cruz the base runner at second base with two outs. Orioles ahead five to one. Ninth inning in the wild card game. Two two pitch here it comes. Just a little bit low and outside. My goodness. Ball three. How did Napoli take that pitch? But he did, and he got the call. They count three and two. Getting a look at the replay. Boy, that hard sinker that almost came back and caught the outside corner, but looks like the umpire made a pretty good call. So three and two. Johnson again takes a look. Napoli will dig in. Orioles ahead five to one in the ninth. Here it comes. Napoli takes a walk in the dirt. So now with two aboard. And the Orioles ahead five to one. We're going to take a little break here. Ten seconds. Station identification on the Orioles radio net. Well, you got to give Mike Napoli some credit. Good at bad. Johnson had him one and two and he came back and coached the walk after several foul balls on those nasty sinkers that he throws so now it is up to Mitch Moreland here. And here comes the pitch swing the line drive that's a base hit to left field Cruz is going to be held up at third base as McLeod comes up with the ball and gets it back in toward the plate. So now they're loaded for the Texas Rangers. And it's going to bring up the left hand hitting David Murphy. And all of a sudden the Texas Rangers have the tying run in the batter's box with the bases loaded and two outs. And the pitch on the way to Murphy is low and outside ball one. Now the Rangers have come back here to make it very interesting. Five to one ball to more two outs bases loaded. And Johnson delivers. Murphy sends a fly ball toward left center. That should do it. McClough is there under it now makes the catch. And for the Orioles there will be at least two games to be played yet. At Oriole Park at Camden Yards. They're in the win column, and we'll see you at Camden Yards on Sunday evening. The Yankees are coming to town. As the Orioles congratulate themselves out there behind the pitcher's mound, Johnson gets it done. He works out of the bases loaded situation. David Murphy on a fly ball to end it, and the Orioles win this thing five to one. For the Texas Rangers, it's going to be a long winter, and for the Orioles, a most improbable season continues. My goodness. What a year this has been.